Good morning, everyone. You are now tuned into the Boxing Bros. I'm Katie, and I'm here with my co-host. What's going on, everybody? It's the commissioner, Trill Dollar Bill. Crooked Finger Slew to everybody. This is G. What up, bro? It's the TVE. What's going on, y'all? Yeah, man. So uh, we're just going to see who's in the building. I see uh, some of our people's in the building. I see Frank Cruz. <laughs> I see Irish boxing bros in the building, and I see Rachel out here uh, talking rubbish uh, about F.A. Ajapa. The release of the boxing bros jollof rice cakes have been delayed but not denied. They are now moved to October 10th for the release of the jollof rice cakes. I'm telling you, there's something special. You're going to love it. Who we have in the building? We have God of War from Germany. Salute to you, brother. Salute. All right, DJ N1, what's good? George Ramos in the building, salute. Yo, Fizzy, Fizzy, I don't know what that flag is right now. I'm drawing blank. That's Malaysia, bro. Come Malaysia. on, Malaysia. What up, Malaysia? Hey, hey. Come on, man, get it together. All right, we got Macca the man in the building. Salute to you, brother. I've been seeing you commenting. I seen you shut down one of uh one of my trolls. I was like, I'm not even going to give him the energy, and uh, Macca the man shut him down. He was like, explain to me how such and such became uh the mandatory or something like that. And Macca the man was like, you act like Caden made him the mandatory, <laughs> like, something like that. My man Wayne Hennessy in the building was good. What's that? Oh, um, Ryu Sheik Takashi. From Japan, salute to you, man. Hopefully, you're enjoying the Olympics out there. Uh, mm -hmm. I fell asleep watching Naomi Osaka play. Um, I don't know if she won or not, but she was winning when I fell asleep. So, yeah, I think his name is Ryusai. Ryusai Takeshi. Ryusai Takeshi. I think so. You know what I mean? If we mispronounce your name, we apologize. We just want to acknowledge you and show you some love. Fizzy, well, that's just the flip flopping you. Yo, you see the flip flopping G, the flip flopping G is the flip flopping you. He repping G now. You lost it. You lost the flip flop. You lost one, Ned. You lost one, Ned. Yeah, it's all good. They come and go. <laughs> <laughs> Zuina, what's going on, Zuina? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm my man, Zigzag Nemesis T. Salute to Irish boxing, bro. Hit that like button, everybody. We got JM, who, who is saying he's LK We're under a new name. Oh, yeah. Hey, JM, JM, we need you to tell us, LK, if that's you, we need to tell, you, uh, tell us why you changed your name. Are the feds after you? What's going on? YouTube police mm -hmm. got it. YouTube police, yeah. <laughs> he, he pissed off one of, uh, you know, the wilder channels. Al Booger. Yeah. Yeah. CJ. CJ in the building. Salute to you, brother. Eric and Mantis. All right. What's going on, brother? Oh, man. I, I get the things popping. Oh, there you go. I, I missed that one. All right. Norman Lewis. Good morning. Salute, salute. All right, all right. All right, we got we got we got 40 45 in the building we might just roll with that and let and let the people come in big love from england salute to you james bash peace mm -hmm. okay my man handsome jam we in here that's right we in the building <laughs> hold on wait what you seen this <laughs> if he enjoyed the wilder channels that he should be rewarded <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Oh. Oh, okay. Hopefully everything's all right. Okay. This is a dope question. Yeah, this should be a segment within itself. What will happen first? The body snatch again, his mandatory title shot, Fury Wilder three, or undisputed? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh up to ours. What's going on? All right, man. I say that we uh Dive in, man. We, we, we gave people enough time to come in. I know we're we're reasonably late. It's not our fault. My bad, y'all. <laughs> All right, well, let's let's get this popping. All right. 
Yeah, so uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to say rest in peace to Frank Vary. Um, we understand that uh, this young man showed tremendous promise and uh, he drowned during the heat wave out there in the UK. Uh, I, I understand it. He's won numerous uh, amateur titles and he showed a lot of promise and, and he passed away young. I think he was 16. Uh, we have actually the article, so. Oh, just give me one second. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna um I'm gonna see if I can if I can do it today, G, after you pull this one up. Right. Let's see how it works. Hold on, I think this is the long link. Where? Hold on, let me see if I can pull it up. Oh, no, 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 that's right. It was the right link because I seen it said Tyson Fury by accident. So. <laughs> yeah, I know um, Tyson Fury like said something about it. Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. All right. Yeah, it says, yeah. Tyson Fury released tribute to teenager, uh, teenage boxer who is latest heat wave drowning victim. And then he goes right there. That's him right there. And so if you go down a little bit, I think it, it says like his amateur credentials in like, um, there it is right there. It said he had made his mark on the boxing world, having won the junior national championships for his weight class between 2014 to 2019. Mm -hmm. so, this, so this young man was a serious, serious talent. Now, I didn't see him, but immediately after learning the news, I took the review and see him and winning the amateur national championship from 2014 to 2019. That's some serious talent. So, uh, you know, the boxing world, we probably lost someone who's going to give us great fights. And I just want to say rest in peace and condolences to his family. Exactly. Anybody else want to add anything? You summed up. You summed it up beautifully, man. You know, salute to that young kid. Yeah, salute, salute to that young man. Uh, my heart goes out to him and his family. Mm -hmm. All right. So now oh, we're gonna. Oh, go before, ahead, go ahead. I'm so sorry, fellas. Um, and I also wanted to send love out to um Pritchett Collins. He was a fighter who was hit illegally, um, with a shot in the ring. He was uh, undefeated into that into that fight. He had brain surgery uh, again, and I, I heard he's recovered from that, and he's doing well, and he should be able to speak soon, very soon. You know what I'm saying? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I saw that too. That's also something that um, to hit him and his family. Hopefully, the surgery went well, and we definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember watching that fight, and I remember us talking about it when it happened. So, um, definitely, hope, hoping for a, a full recovery for him as well. Yes. All right. Love from the boxing bros. That's how we start this off. Love from the boxing bros. All right. Now on to some lighter stuff. Our yeah. reaction yeah. to Joe Joyce versus Carlos Takam, which before we even dive into this, if he's watching, you sell out Stretch. Stretch, our Nigerian brother, before the fight, picked Carlos Takam to beat Joe Joyce, a fellow Nigerian, which to me, I told him, you a sellout. Now, uh, moving on, I'm going to turn over to Kaspira G. What was your reaction to uh, the fight between Carlos Takam and uh, Joe Joyce? Yo, I'm going to be honest. I thought Carlos Takam was winning pretty much every round. You know what I mean? Um, now, Joyce, yo, man, he's tricky, man, because, you know, he's really, really slow. But for some reason, when he connects, he damages people. But I felt like Tackham was pulling off, I think, every round until the round where the, the, the ref called it on TKO. And, and this is my issue because uh, I, I believe it also happened – it was not the – it was one of the undercard fights where the ref just called it. And I'm like, yo, they don't do standing counts in the U.K.? Like, and to me, it doesn't make sense. You could get knocked down like three times in a round. You know what I mean? But you, you're you allowed to get back up and fight and continue on. But Carlos Tackham, who, yeah, he got hurt, but not like he was out of there, you know? And the ref was like, yeah, it's over. 
to me, I, I just I don't like that. I think if you think the fighter is hurt, but he's still standing, allow him to get like an eight count, ten count, whatever, a standing count. You know what I mean? That's right. We told. That's what we told him. That's why <laughs> me and G, we taking his place and yeah. we prepping Naja the right way. You know what I'm saying? All right, go ahead. You're shaming yourself, but <laughs> but back to to Carlos Tackham. I just felt like, you know, I thought George was going to win sooner or later, anyways, because we all know Carlos Tackham has an endurance problem. You know what I mean? His stamina is not the best. So I was like, you know, in deep waters, that's when Joe Joyce is going to knock him out. But, you know, this was like the round where I was like, hey, you know what? Nah, he he looks hurt, but I don't feel like he was out. And the rep just came in so quick. was like, yo, yo, you're done. And I'm just like, what? Like, so to me, I'm like, man, at least allow fighters of this caliber to prove themselves in the ring. And I felt like that rep didn't do that, man. So. I, I want to say salute to to George Joyce. You know, you know, I was rooting for you. I wanted you to win, but not like that, man. I kind of felt like Carlos Tackham could have got, you know, could have went probably another round, you know, um, and because you was you was buttering him up, you was about to get him out of there anyways. But at least allow the fighter to to land on his sword, yo. That's all I'm saying. So, but um, yeah, man, Tackham, man. I don't know, man. Maybe you you could get like a another fight with um, like. You know, uh, Del Boy or something, man. But you know, I don't know. Something about the UK, they just don't like you over there attacking, bro. You just, you got to figure it out. <laughs> Joe <is> slow, <laughs> my great grandma. <laughs> it's crazy how slow he is. Every time he threw a hook, I was like, bro, that hook is not gonna land. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> you know, but when he does land punches, it doesn't even feel like he's throwing power into them punches. But dudes be acting like the reactions is like they just got shot by a bullet. So I don't know, man. Joyce, man, he a mythical being for real. He might just be the judge. You know? <laughs> Yo, Trill Dollar Bill, what was your reaction to the fight? Um, Joe, everything that um that G said, I thought that um Joe Joyce was eventually gonna get out of there. You know, um, but it was, I felt, I felt, uh, what's the, what's the word I felt for, um, Tackham? It's the word that I was, I was thinking right when I seen it. Um, because the, the, the guy, I right, this is how I feel. Um, hey, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Don't jump the gun. Let Trill go. I'm getting there. Go ahead, Trill. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I was going to bring that up, too. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm But my man, Usi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know? You know? <laughs> but we already know. But I've been saying it. No, we're going to bring that question to G. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, now, we, I'm not going to go there. All I'm going to say is this. Uh, I feel... Um, I'm gonna stick to the bouncing ball. That's what we say. I'm gonna stick to the bouncing ball. ball. The bouncing ball. You know what I'm saying? Um, poor tackle. Yeah. Like you're a fighter and you're a warrior. You don't never know when you're gonna get another chance like this. Um, get another check or can be uh, you know, um, he was about to go out, but let him go out on his shield or at least. He was still there. Like, I know he was hurt, but to me, he was still there. That's why when the ref started to fight, he pushed the ref off. Like, yo, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? And I seen him crying. I seen the frustration because, you know, as a fighter, you don't know when your next fight could be, especially when you don't had a couple of losses. So um, definitely I thought that that was messed up. Hopefully uh, Tagan gets another shot in there. It's not going to be the bag because, you know, every fight you get and you win, you get a bigger bag, you know. Now the bag going to be a little lesser, but – Hopefully get another shot with somebody in there, you know. Shout out to Joe Joyce, the juggernaut. Stretch, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. Stretch is a sellout. All right, oh. Stretch, what happened? <laughs> PBE, man. Man. Before, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, the world must know that you ditched us on going to the gym. You didn't even mm. respond to our text messages. Sorry. So Sorry. I don't even know if you watched the fight. Did you even I, watch the fight? That's the I watched watch the fight. fight. I watched the fight. I watched the fight. All right. Man, what was Carissa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Good time. Actually, it was Clarissa's anniversary. She was with uh her. Yeah, watch your mouth, Kaden. No, no, watch your mouth. Right, watch your mouth. I'm not letting you get it out. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. My bad, right. man. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, but I don't get it, man. Joe Joyce. I don't. I, 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 I'm, I'm gonna pull a G right now. I like Joe Joyce, but his technique is horrid. It's horrible. I can't stand to watch him fight. He throws his twos like this, his one like this, his hooks like this. His hook like this, and he seems to get the job done. I don't know what's up with this man. Like, it is so slow. It's like watching paint dry with Joe Joyce, man. It takes forever for him to land a punch. But once he lands, he does damage. And I know the fight was stopped earlier. I was like, why are you stopping the fight, man? And, um, Tack was still on his feet. But once the camera panned to his face, you saw his eye was swollen shut. And I was like, good call, ref. I was like, good call, rapper. I don't know what's in these gloves of Joe Joyce. The way he throws them, it's just it's ridiculous. But he did have some pop at the end. When he caught it, when he caught him, he was throwing his flirt. He was like, boom, boom, boom. It was still bad. It was still bad technique, but it was like he got it done, you know. So I don't know, Joe Joyce. You can win some fights. I I, I call you to win some fights, but against the elite, I don't know, man. But you know, we're gonna get on to that. <laughs> All right, so before I go, the one thing I wanted to do was make sure I held someone's feet to the fire because all I heard from someone is that <laughs> Joe Joyce would destroy Alexander Usyk. And we just saw Joe Joyce in there with, with Carlos Taco. <laughs> so uh, now I want to go back to Kasperi G. And ask Kaspira G, do you still believe after Joe Joyce's performance last night that he would beat Alexander Usyk? Plead the fifth, G. You better plead the fifth. No comment. What? <laughs> what? G, yo, see, this is what I mean about G. All right, now look at what G just did. Now, for, for all of you who've been following the Boxing Bros for a very long time, and you and, you, and y'all say, well, why do you attack G? Y'all remember the gorilla mess G was talking about Usyk? Do you not remember that? Do you remember Trill having these arguments with G? Everyone telling G you're being unreasonable to Usyk. And G's like, yo, he's Ukrainian soup. And now, today, when we bring it to G and we say, G, what do you think? He gives us no comment. That's why we attack G. That's why we attack G. Let me please explain. I'm doing if I do, I'm doing if I don't. <laughs> no comment. You know what I'm saying? What you mean? You, it's your fault. You you were the one who had to be so hard on Usyk. You were the one who was so confident that Joe Joyce would beat Usyk. Yo, oh, man, listen, man. Yo, listen. All right. Y'all want me to be real? We want you. We want G. That's what we want. If you want G, there is what it is, man. We eat Ukrainian soup. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you want honesty, yo, Joyce, man, stay away from your man Usyk, bro. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> don't, don't, yo, man, listen. We might have to say, no more Ukrainian soup. It might be jollof rice and shepherd's pie. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, you don't want no problems with Usyk. Not right now. You too slow, man. You just, you too slow. You too clumsy. It's just bad, man. It's just bad, man. So, salute, yeah. hey, listen. I'm still root for, for Joyce. When we do predictions, I'll still pick Joyce. It is what it is. But I'm not going to be hurt if I lose that, that prediction. That's all I'm going to say. All right. So G doesn't want to be known as flip-flop and G right now. So he doesn't want to flip-flop. <laughs> but um, what I'll say is this. For me, I think uh, the criticism of of Joe Joyce is unwarranted because we already knew that Joe Joyce was slow going in. It wasn't like he was going to turn into some speed type of fighter. When you look at the way he beat Daniel Dubois, it was the same thing. Daniel Dubois basically got tired of punching him and taking jabs to the face. And then the more he slowed down, the more Joe Joyce was able to get him and then eventually got him out of there. This fight kind of followed the same blueprint. What I would say about Joe Joyce is although he lacks speed, he does have great timing. He finds a way to put his jab on people's face. And his jab is like a straight right hand because people, the way they react to his jab is crazy. 
like uh, Ned was pointing out, he doesn't throw with the greatest technique all the time. But when he puts a glove on these guys, the way they react is crazy to me. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, could a punch that slow really hurt that bad? But you know what? I don't want to find out. Thanks. <laughs> like, I'm watching uh, Joe Joyce, like, hit this guy. And you look at Tackham, Tackham would land one of his hooks, right? And Joyce would just eat it like it was nothing. But then Joyce would hit him with one of his jabs, and Tekum would react more to Joyce's jab than Joyce reacted to Tekum's hooks. It was just insane to me. It was like, you know, the animal kingdom, watching like a bear walk down like a gazelle, you know, corner a gazelle, until finally it, it was just, it was like nothing Takum could do could really hurt Joyce. So Joyce was just going to put the pressure on him until he he wilted. And, and eventually that's what happened. Now, people want to get to the stoppage. Joe Joyce has nothing to do with the stoppage. Salute complex. What's good? Joe Joyce has nothing to do with the stoppage. He can't really determine when the ref stops the fight. But you'll be lying to yourself if you don't admit that Joe Joyce was coming on in that moment. And in that moment, he had Takum hurt. And Takum didn't try to hold. He didn't try to throw a punch back. He just shelled up. And so the ref was thinking, I'm going to save this guy from himself, which I believe the stoppage was early. I don't like those stoppage. I, I, I think you should at least let a man hit the floor first before you stop it from like just accumulation of punishment. Like, I think you should let a fighter hit the ground first. Give him a chance to get back up. Put it on the fighter to show that the fighter doesn't want to continue. I mean, I wouldn't say it was a good stoppage, but I'm not going to be like, oh, it was a robbery. It was a bad stoppage. If you asked me to put my life on an outcome, Joyce was going to stop him eventually. So I don't I just think the ref just, you know, didn't want to delay the inevitable and wanted to spare tackle. With that being said, though, he may be slow. He may look awkward. He may be all these things, but he's beating Daniel Dubois. And he's beating Carlos Taco in his 13th fight. So you got to look at this guy like he's legit and say what you want to say. But all he does is win. And until somebody beats him, his name is up there with the elite. Yeah, oh, facts. I just wanted to grab this last comment. To calm is known. Yo, is it to calm or attack him? Because they were saying both on uh, 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 Fight TV. On our side, they were saying both. You know what I mean? So I don't know which one it is, but uh, Takama Takam is known to be durable. The stoppage was early, but inevitable, which is true. You know what I mean? Yeah, fair point. So then, oh, hold on. First, let me, uh, what is it? We got, bam. Ricky leaves. Oh, you say you got them, right? The, the videos? I don't have that one, though. Do you have it? Yeah, I'll pull it up. Yeah. So some yeah, shout out to everybody in the comment section. I, I see the love, and I got nothing but love for you guys as well. But when we be doing the um, talking about the uh, the joints, I can't shout y'all out when we talk about the subjects and all that. But I appreciate the love and thank you guys for all. Yeah, the support. for this one, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I probably forgot. But anyways, Ricky Hatton said. Uh, in an interview that he believes that Joe Joyce would give Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury problems. The question is, do you agree? I'm going to turn it over to Trill Dollar Bill. Do you agree that Joe Joyce would give Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury problems? No. <laughs> That's it? Just plain and simple like that? Just a no? No. Is there any scenario in which you can envision Joe Joyce giving Anthony <laughs> Joshua and Tyson Fury problems? Thrilled out of it. Yes, there is. All right. A charity match when these two gentlemen put their one arm behind their back <laughs> and they go in there with Joe Joyce. Other than that, this is just fun for these guys. And, and I see everybody talk about Joe Joyce's chin. It's good and it's it's holding up for now, but once these guys with with this uh, uh these uh, these other athletes come in there and keep tagging them, you know what I'm saying? He got late. He got he came in late to the sport, so his his chin's still there a little bit. You know these guys, 
these guys will rattle it for him, you know? So I don't want him to keep taking these punches, especially he was taking those crazy right hands from Tackham. If we take it from the, these 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 heavyweights that's in their prime ready to go, I don't know. <laughs> I was even saying, A, A, G. I even said this last night, Pete Game. I said this last night. I said it wow to hit him with a right hand, the way he kept taking those right hands. I was saying he's going to sleep, man. He's going to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Night, night. You know what I'm saying? Ricky Hatton must have some type of deal in line promoting this kid or something because I don't see it. <laughs> Chris, watch, your mouth. watch your mouth. <laughs> Chris, that's my guy. Uh, all right, Conspiracy G, man. Uh, what's your reaction to what Ricky Hatton had to say? Do you agree? Listen. I would have agreed if we were talking about AJ from like four or five years ago. But AJ <laughs> took you know what I mean? And like I, I don't see Fury knocking out uh Joyce, but Fury's just gonna win by points, you know. Um I think AJ will actually knock out Joyce. You know, AJ's faster and he's a stronger guy than than a Carlos Tackham. You know, um he kinda it's it's actually now nah, let me let me I'm gonna stop because Daniel the ball was actually strong too. And Joyce, he ate them punches, but AJ's a more skilled fighter than than a Daniel the ball. So I, I think both of them will win by decision. You know, Joyce, it's gonna be really, really, really hard for Joyce to even land. Like he's just too slow, man. Like he's a good fighter. He he has a great chin, but that's not enough to beat the elite guys in this division. TVE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with my co-host. I don't see him like I don't see him I don't agree with Ricky Hatton at all on that statement. I don't see George Judge being a problem for any uh any of the um top top five heavyweights. I don't see him AJ Fury, they're gonna walk around him, they're gonna bow box him, they're gonna they're gonna beat the brakes off that. I, yeah, Joyce, I like you. I don't wanna sound like G, but The fight you just the fight you've been given, they've been tailor made for you. Except for Dubois. I did pick Dubois and you 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 surprised me with that one. But your style is different. It's it's unorthodox to boxing. I don't know how you get in the ring. I don't know, I don't know how you I, you get the job done, but when it comes to elite boxing, you just gotta prove yourself. And at this point, I just don't see it happening until you prove yourself. Otherwise, I can't see you be AJ or Fury. They're, they're two, they're two, they're, they're way above, <laughs> they're past, they're levels ahead of you. And that's it, that's it. I don't want to go even further. I don't want to say anything disrespectful mm -hmm. to you, but yeah, Slow Joe, yo, that's his name on the show, yo, Slow Joe, you know, but hey, man, <laughs> it's just, it's, I, I can't see it. I can't see it happening at all. all right. <laughs> so if you're asking me, do I believe he can give him problems? I don't believe that he would, but it wouldn't shock me if he did. Um, he's durable. Uh, he has a good jab. He has good timing. And until we see his chin cracked, like, I mean, and trust me, I believe his chin's going to crack. Like, you can't take all those punches forever. If you look at Carlos Baldemir, for example, Carlos Baldemir was a guy who was known to have, like, a real sturdy chin. He would take punishment. He would take you know, vicious shots from the upper echelon fighters. And then eventually Canelo caught uh, Carlos Baldemir with a shot and he was just out. And up until that point, he was known for having a brilliant chin, but you can only take so many punches. I don't think Tyson Fury would knock him out, but I think Tyson Fury would outbox him because he's, he, he's a talented boxer. And I also know that Tyson Fury is not going to get tired like Carlos Takam. So Tyson Fury is going to have the stamina to, test his chin for 12 rounds. And uh, Anthony Joshua was the kind of guy who I would consider a boxer puncher. And you look at the way that he caught Pulev. He caught Pulev just boxing him and taking what he gave him and then he hurt him. And I would see a scenario where he would hurt Joyce probably just boxing him and then he can go in for the kill. But with that being said, man, you can't write off Joyce because he's 12 and 0, Olympic silver medalist, Although we feel like he's slow and we think these guys will do him in, he's winning. So you got to give him credit. What's up, G? We got we got clarification from uh, Blues One. Blues One it says in the UK, when we say he give he would give them problems, it means 
he would lose, but hurt AJ and Fury in defeat. Thank you for that clarification. Oh, okay. Well, I was I was reading. I, my man Fizzy was like, "Yo, Trill, are you looking at man questions, right?" <laughs> and he, and he probably looked real crazy. But I was looking at a, a, something that uh, one of somebody said, and it was like, um, "I think that uh, that KO hat and got from Pacquiao had long lasting effects." <laughs> <laughs> so when I, I wanted all the brothers to finish talking. So <laughs> before I said that, that's what I was looking at. I was looking all crazy over here. I probably looked perplexed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. My fault for cutting you off. I just felt like I had to read that since it was uh, providing some clarity for us. You know? oh, no, I was basically done. That's just, uh, if, if that's what they mean. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what he meant. But even even that hurting them, I don't know. But we'll see. Yeah. I don't know, know. Irish boxing, bro. Next up, we got. Fury says sparring partners gave him C-19. Mm. Yes, so uh, Tyson Fury is basically saying, like, don't blame him for the fight not happening. Uh, and uh, we have uh, the article here, so we'll just pull it up. All right, so here you see a Tyson Fury says, I'm mm. not the person to blame for COVID postponement of Deontay Wilder trilogy fight. Um, and if you go into the quotes, he says, I'm the last person to blame. He said, I do not. I don't have a large entourage, unlike most world champions with all their a licking hangers on. Since coming back into full time camp, I hadn't been anywhere other than my new house here in the top ranked gym, nor had my team. The only people whose movements I couldn't completely control were my sparring partners. Who change? They came in and out of the bubble, and everyone knows this town is full of COVID. I suspect we caught it from one of them. So Tyson Fury is saying that uh, don't blame him for uh, him getting uh, C-19. He says, if anything, he caught it from one of his spawn partners. Uh, Kaspira G, are you buying that? I mean... It's a logical explanation, but I don't even believe the C-19 excuse anyway. So it's like, man, I ain't buying none of this by default. But um, I'll say this, though. At least we know it wasn't uh, Joseph Parker. You know what I mean? Because Joseph Parker out here in these streets stutting. So, <laughs> you know, so I don't know, man. I don't know if he's saying Anderson or F.A. I don't know, man. You know, but um, yeah, Fury has to say this, man. This is like the the... Like, if you had to come up with an explanation on why, if I was Fury, on why the fight was canceled, and you know everyone's blaming you, like, yo, you're a professional, how how the hell you get COVID, this, that, third, weren't you vaccinated, blah, 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 blah. You know, he's going to have to say something, and this makes sense, you know? It's just, okay, oh, he's a lion. <laughs> yo, I'm, I agree with Complex, man. Salute to our boxing cousin, because... Yeah, this just sounds like a fib, man. Just more fibs on fibs on fibs, man. Just, yo, Fury, please, man, just show up on and what's that? What's the date? October. We know, we know how Fury got it. I'm gonna tell the world how Fury got it when it's my turn. All right, all right. I'm, we I'm, know how Fury got it. I'm curious to hear this, but yeah, how Fury got it. Y'all, right. y'all gonna have me start talking like Trill out here. I'm like, yo, go next. Ahead. You know what I mean? Go ahead. Some people already caught on to how Fury got it, but I'm going to make it official when it's my goal. Go ahead, Dollar Bill. Nobody want to see this fight. <laughs> Seven. Seven. Nobody want to see this fight. Nobody at all. Um, Not even Tyson Fury. <laughs> that's, that's why you said <laughs> no nah, um, let me stop it man I don't I don't I don't want to hear no more from these guys Tyson Fury is like oh you can't blame him yes I can blame you because I want it undisputed so um yeah I'm I'm done talking about this guy in these fights y'all guys handle it postpone right. this forever hashtag postpone this forever <laughs> All right, TVE. Man, I don't even know. Like the excuses is crazy at this point. Fury, 
you're looking these are clown antics right now. You're looking like a clown to me, man. And it's 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 like I I, I have I, I love you like I I lo- like you as fighter, but this is just making me like not even like uh I'm getting sick and tired of it, man. Like come on, man. Like you when you came back, you was like you want the biggest fights to happen and so and so and now you're doing all of this. You like if if it's really COVID, get well soon. That's all I can say. But after that, I'm gonna just say, man, shut your mouth. Cause sometimes it just you just sound foolish after after a while, man. You just sound really ridiculous. If you had COVID, just let's recover and come back in. When is it? The fight's in October. Oh, yeah, come I'll back in October. That. But at this point, yeah, I'm sick and tired of all this. This like oh, pointing the finger. Like, oh, this is what happened, or the excuses. I'm sick and tired of it. From Wilder Fury, I'm just sick and tired of y'all, man. It's, it's annoying. Y'all holding the box. Let's be clear. Fury, I'm going to say what you couldn't say. Fury's letting you know that his team stayed in the house. They only went to top rank boxing gym, and they went <laughs> back to the house. The Don't only start. people who left the bubble were his sparring partners. Okay, and what do we know? He was sparring Big Baby and he was sparring F.A. Now, he didn't want to put F.A. on blast, so he said my sparring partners. But we all know F.A. been out there in these streets. Okay, F.A. been out there. You heard what he said. Everybody knows this town is filled with COVID. That was code for everybody knows that F.A. is in town. And F.A. has been out there doing all types of stuff. Spawn Tyson Fury hugging up on Fury because he's getting beat up and he gave Fury C-19. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing around. Look, really what I believe is that, and I think it was Bruce Leroy who said it, Wilder's not making a big deal about the fight being postponed. So it seems like he's okay with it being postponed. His team hasn't really come out and said anything. You look at the fact that they postponed the fight, rebooked the venue, and increased the ticket prices. It seems like the venue and the promoters aren't really too upset about the fight being postponed. As we pointed out, the Olympics just started, and a lot of people, including myself, have been watching the Olympic events that have been taking place the last two days. So if you say to me that this was an agreement and Fury had to take the heat because I guess he's the one who had to come out and say he, he, he's, he had C-19, so the heat's on him. But when Fury says, don't blame me for the fight being postponed, I think he's really feeling like, see, I had to take this hit for the team and now everybody's coming at me. So he's just trying to deflect and, and, and spread the blame around. But when all is said and done, man, I believe all camps agreed to to push this fight back that's the way it seems to me just based on the way everything lines up and i, I like to say i agree 1000 with my homie over here kaden because listen this just seems too funny man they're all in on it if while this team thought he was lying the smoke would have been like through the roof right now but they seem everybody all sides seem kind of cool with this c19 excuse man so it just seems a little odd but Oh, man. Next up, my favorite heavyweight. <laughs> Usyk will be the third Olympic gold medalist AJ has faced. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Salute to the Ukraine, man. Salute to the Ukraine. G, man. <laughs> Yo, remember all the smack G used to talk about Usyk? Because if he beats Joshua, G's going to be his biggest fan afterwards. Oh, I promise y'all will not. G's going to be like, yo, it's going to be like G and Benavidez. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, G and Bermuda um, Silverian, so though. It's going to be yeah. crazy. All right. So <laughs> here uh, you see, uh, and this is uh, ESPN ringside. They say with uh, Josh, Joshua Usyk official, Anthony Joshua will have three bouts against Olympic gold medalists on his resume. The first would be Alexander Usyk. Well, not well. That's the most recent Alexander Usyk from uh, 2012, and then there's Alexander Povetkin from 2004, and then there's Vladimir Klitschko from 1996. So those would be three guys who Anthony Joshua faced that won Olympic gold, and of course Anthony Joshua himself won Olympic gold in 2016, I believe. So um, I'm gonna turn it over to you, Trill Dollar Bill. Uh, what's your reaction to that? That 
fighting Alexander Usyk would be uh, uh, that Alexander Usyk would be the third Olympic gold medalist that uh, Anthony Joshua has faced. Sorry, that's cool. But me and Tito did it. <laughs> Three gold medal. Three <laughs> gold medal. <laughs> no, 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 Trinidad. Hey, Trill, correction. Yeah. T- Trinidad beat. Oh, three yeah. gold medals. <laughs> he, he got the face three. Trinidad beat three <laughs> gold medals. Okay. You know, shout out to my man Trinidad, man. I was watching some old fights thinking about you, bro, because I know that was your guy. <laughs> Somebody give Trinidad a cheeseburger. Um, <laughs> uh, listen, um, shout out to uh, jo- Joshua. Shout out to both guys because I haven't heard no crap. They said they're going to fight. They're going to fight. So we're going to see what's up. I have nothing to say about that. Shout out to to, uh, to my man, um, Anthony Joshua, and to Alexander Usyk. All right, Kasperi G, gold medals, not gold. bronze medals. <laughs> <Go ahead>. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know half of the chat is thinking I'm going to bring smoke to Usyk. I'm actually not. Like, <laughs> To be a gold medalist is a major accomplishment. You know, like every country invests in the Olympic team. Well, not necessarily the U.S., like other countries. But nonetheless, every country is trying to get that gold medal. You know, so, uh, you know, Usyk, man, is the pride of his country. That's that's great, you know. And the fact that AJ is going to fight a third gold medalist, that's that's a major accomplishment for Joshua as well. You know, Um I mean, personally, I just think AJ's just going to beat him, you know. But nonetheless, man, I give Usyk, uh, you know, credit. I even give AJ credit for this win because he is the unified, uh, no, undisputed cruiserweight champion. So it's not like he's like a bum off the street. He's not like a, a Ukrainian Uber driver. Thank you, know, you like, G. Thank not, you, G. Uh, even 100. Thank you. I just think he's Yo, G, you flip-flopped already, cuz. You flip-flopped, son. You flip-flopped already, cuz. Nah, G. Ukrainian you said, you said that he was uh, you said in the heavyweight division he was fooled. You said yes. he was Ukrainian soup. You he said went. that he was easy peasy for all the top heavyweights. Now you, G, see, this is why we get at G. Go ahead, G. Go ahead, G. No, go ahead, G. Watch the old videos and look at G's energy. Watch the old videos and look at G's energy for Usyk compared listen, to listen, listen, listen. I'm just talking about his accolades. and His accolades are impressive. But he's still fooled for AJ. That's all I'm saying, man. AJ's still gonna be sipping on Ukrainian soup, you know. But nonetheless, it's gonna be a good victory that no one could be like, hey, yo, oh AJ, man, he don't count. He definitely counts, you know, like and he has the accolades to prove it. So salute to um Usyk, man. When you lose, man, keep your head up high because you were supposed to lose anyways. Just saying. G, are you okay? I'm okay. Is, uh, is anyone outside your crib right now? I mean, yo, I told have you. Y'all, have you? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Heard this no, four, heard this four guys out his house, outside his house yeah, with a Adidas track suit. I told y'all. I told y'all. I told y'all have you? Have you ran into anyone from uh, the nah, Ukraine? Bro, I, I already told y'all. I got the call from Vitali and Vladimir. They were like, "Yo, you Gucci. Anytime you come over here, touch ground, you safe." You know what I mean? They got a limo waiting for me and everything. So. It's whatever, man. I might be the Ukrainian ambassador. You feel me? Yeah, right. Right. Okay, G. All right, man. I see I see you transitioning already. It's all good. All right, uh, TBE. Man, that's actually dope. Like, um, to be a gold medalist, you you put on for the like you put on for your country where you're from on the world. You put them on the like you put them on the you put them, you make them known, like you know, <laughs> shout out to all the gold medalists, like Usain Bolt, uh Michael Phelps. Uh, I'm drawing blanks. Uh, yeah, shout out to the gold medalists who do their thing, yo. And for them to um, for for AJ to fight three in his career, that, well, going to fight three, is a major accomplishment. It's like a feat many can't say they did, and to be a gold medalist yourself is a feat many can't say they did, and as well. So, you know, it's it's a it's it's, it's pretty dope. Yeah, it's pretty dope. So you know, I can't hate on it at all, yo. I can't. I, I just love it. I, I love like like you know, people like this like like the not AJ's resume, but you know, it's it's pretty it's it's pretty dope at this point. Like yo, he's just doing. He's just accomplishing so much. Just one more thing we need from him is undisputed, yo, and it's coming soon, baby. 
2025, maybe. <laughs> hey, y'all, yo, the comments is crazy, bro. <laughs> the Ukrainian goose. He didn't blink. <laughs> they ran up on G. He didn't whole blink, G. <laughs> yeah, blink, G. Blink, G. Blink, G. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So I think it's just a testament to Anthony Joshua. He said it recently that he's a throwback fighter. And you have to give Anthony Joshua credit. When you look at his resume, and I know some people try to, some people actually really do try to pick apart his resume. He was willing to unify, which you got to give him credit for. When the belts were vacated, he was willing to unify. Other people had the op opportunity to unify. They chose not to. Um, Anthony Joshua did that. Anthony Joshua faced a who's who of the top 10. When you look at the top 10 heavyweights, even the top 15, really, look at the top 15 heavyweights. He has victories over a lot of these guys. Um, so you had to give him credit for that. Now, when you factor in that he's fighting his third Olympic gold medalist, with him being an Olympic gold medalist himself, that speaks volumes because you have to look at the history of the sport and you say, well, what does Olympic gold really mean? Well, Muhammad Ali was an Olympic gold medalist. Lennox Lewis was an Olympic gold medalist, right? Uh, Vladimir Klitschko, Olympic gold medalist. So you see, in, as a heavyweight, winning an Olympic gold can, can mean a lot. It, it, can be a, it can determine who's going to be great. Like, even you look at Riddick Bowe. Riddick Bowe won silver uh, in the games with Lennox, and even he was undisputed. Um, and so I think the fact that he's taken on uh, this, this, this uh, level of opposition – the fact that he's unified champion uh, in, in the fact that he's he's even taken a loss and immediately avenged that loss, which is something we're going to see if Deontay Wilder can do on October 9th. You have to say, like, this man really is a throwback fighter. And thank God for Anthony Joshua in the heavyweight division, because without him, all we would have is soap offers and WWE storylines. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> bro. I've been dying. These comment sessions be crazy, right? It'd be crazy, my brother. I call it be, yo. They put the horse head in the bed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 like, oh, crazy. So, G woke up like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> yo, shoot. Yo, G, G, came on, G came on here real humble with that. With Usyk today. <laughs> Hey man, y'all listen. If Joyce, if Joyce just volley Carlos tackle, I would have kept the same energy. But after seeing that, <laughs> I'm, scrolling, I'm scrolling up. That's a funny one, Yo, who this? This I don't know. I'm scrolling. I'm looking at the comments. I'm like, you see how I made that that thing about crushes? I be trying, be trying to tell you, I be yours. This guy, somebody got a crush with somebody. You talk about people who need a hit. We're men. You talk about a man, another man need another haircut. I told you they be having crushes. Y'all thought I was joking. No, I know what you mean. Yeah, this close from being a homeboy off the off. Don't, the don't. Break, you know what I'm saying? Don't. Uh, leave, you can leave. You, as long as it's not like outrageous. Look, you leave. I know what you want, and the calendar is coming. I'm December. I'm gonna be in December. I know what you want. <laughs> you pansy. Hi, <laughs> Irish boxer, but how you my man's you gonna say this, man? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> He's with Kenny and left the I don't know, man. We're gonna de deliver this question to uh to G. Oh, what, would you, what, what question uh, you Oh, that's the Ned, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's Ned's the back enthusiast of the heavy. Hey man, <laughs> hey man, we uh, if you know, you know, yo. When I said that statement, you if you know, you know. That's all. Uh, uh, we know who, who's mouth is <laughs> mouth. I was putting out notice on uh, who said what, but you know, if I'm the back enthusiast, I'm a back. Usa keeps don't miss, don't skip back day. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yo, Ned, come on over. Don't you. skip back day. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next topic, man. Yo, that you uh, crazy. The WBO orders, uh-oh, TC to fight Sean Paul. Yeah. Man. Yeah. We're down. It's yeah. We need, I haven't seen uh, the TC fans in here like that, but we're going to get to it anyway. All right, so 
The WBO has spoken and they've ordered Terrence Crawford to fight Sean Porter. Here's a tweet from Mike Carpenter. And it says, in shocking turn of events, a sanctioning body has done something applaudable. The WBO ordered a bout between Terrence Crawford and Sean Porter for Bud's Walter Waite title. If no deal reached within 30 days, purse bid will be ordered with 60% going to Crawford. What a fight. So it is official. The WBO has ordered Terrence Bud Crawford to fight Showtime Sean Porter. And a deal must be reached within 30 days or it's going to go to a purse bid. So I'm going to uh, turn it over to you, Trill Dollar Bill. What's your reaction to this? Okay, I'm following the bouncing ball because we got other questions that come after this. So for this idea, I, I hope he goes to a purse bid. You know why? So nobody can, so both fighters can be well compensated. So it'll be no discussions about money or anything like that. Let the highest bidder get the fight. I think they're going to try to do it to Fimo Lopez. I think that's what I think TC going to try to do. Um, He's probably going to holler at uh, Sean too. Like, yo, we can probably get a bigger bag if we hold out. <laughs> Let one of these guys make a purse bid or it can backfire on them. But I think that they, they should try to do it to Fimo Lopez thing, let it go to a purse bid and see if they can get some good money, good money for this fight. But um, it got to happen. It got to happen because, the you know, the WBC, you know, WB um, all said that it's, they, they, they wanted to happen. So it got to happen. So hopefully that, um, you know, they can get compensated well for this. Uh, all right, Conspiracy G. Yeah, um, well, I love this fight. You know I mean I think it's gonna be an action-packed fight. But I, honestly, I think you know the fight should be under ESPN, you know what I mean? And I'm not like a, a Bob Aram uh apologist or anything, but seeing that they had a long relationship, he's lost a lot of money on TC. It would be nice if you know the fight be on ESPN. But the problem is, I think Sean will probably be the A side in this fight. It sounds crazy because TC has no belts, but Sean's gonna get more money though. You know what I mean? So if that doesn't happen, then it's gonna go to purse bid. So you know, and I think TC would be okay with that. If well, I'm, I'm hoping TC would be okay with that because he understands he needs this fight. TBE. Man, shout out to Trill. Oh uh, well, I mean. Shout out to WBO for make, do, um, doing this move right here because, you know, now they're forcing TC to, like, get out of his comfort zone and make him fight some competition. And, you know, I can't I can't wait. Hopefully nothing derails this fight, you know. <laughs> we done seen, we done seen um, Bob's fighters pull some, pull that, pull that little uh, they don't feel well trick. You know, T.O., <laughs> Tyson, now T.C., you know, it may, but, you know, in 30 days, hopefully we get, we. I feel like if Triller is not the highest bidder for this fight, I hope Eddie jumps on it because I think he can make this fight big. You know, it, it's, it's like, I don't know who wouldn't bid on this fight. Like, this is going to be an entertaining, like, I want, this is something dope to follow now, like, like this, that this news just broke. Like, there, like, who wouldn't want to see this? Who wouldn't want to pay for this? This is like a dope pay-per-view fight. And I can't wait. I just can't wait to see what, what, what how this unfolds. Yeah, hopefully. Okay, this so, mm -hmm. okay, so yeah, let me just rock for a second. This is all I've ever wanted. You see, I see I see stuff like this all the time. Well, your opinion about who would win a fight doesn't actually mean the person would win the fight. That's why we have the fight. So you never made a wrong prediction. I'm I'm one of the most accurate predictors on youtube check my history my prediction record is really accurate i'm like nine over 90 percent but i'm not 100 so like what i'm trying to explain to you is just because you think something doesn't mean that it will actually happen that's why you have the fight and so the one thing about this that i am extremely happy about and i want to salute the wbo on is I don't have to hear TC would beat Sean Porter. TC would beat this guy. I actually get to see if he can. Because like I said, you got to show me. It's Missouri over here. You got to show me. I don't care what you say. You got to show me that you can do it. And now I get to see. And all you, all you people who talk like he's the Don and all you people who talk like he's all that, we're going to see. 
I don't want to hear it from you. I want to see it. It sounds cute when you say it. It sounds like a fetish when you say it. It sounds like a fantasy. It sounds like you grab your lotion, you know what I'm saying? Baby oil, your lubricant of preference, get your hands wet. That's what it sounds like when you say TC would be Sean Porter. TC would be Danny Garcia. You know what matters to me? Did he beat him? That's what matters to me. Not, oh, he would, what he would do. I keep hearing that. What someone would do does nothing for me. What have you done? Show me. Period. And thank you, WBO, because now we really get to see what he's about. Is he going to take this fight? Is he going to find a way to weasel out the fight? He's claiming that no one wants to get in the ring with him. Well, Sean Porter's not trying to get out of this fight, and we're going to see what happens. Let's see what happens when it's time for the fight. That's it. I just want to see, I want to see Terrence Crawford opposite Sean Porter, and then I want to see what happens at the final belt. That's all that matters to me. All this other rhetoric is irrelevant. All right. Let's get into that next topic. TC says he's been begging for a real challenge. Okay, okay, yeah. It was like this combo just went only feds. <laughs> <laughs> No, I have I have been looking at Malik stuff. I have been looking at Malik stuff. <laughs> oh, all right. So Terrence Crawford on Sean Porter WBO order. I've been begging for a real challenge for years. All right. So here it is right here. Uh, this is what Terrence Crawford had to say. He said, I've been begging for a real challenge for years. All the so-called elite Walter Waits have shown no interest in fighting me. Now one of them is finally being forced to. I'll show once again why I'm the best pound for pound fighter in the world. Be ready. That's what Terrence Crawford had to say. <laughs> so <laughs> you're being forced you know. to. You got the belt. <laughs> <laughs> you chill, so are you, bro. It's all you, bro. <laughs> Easy, stop it. Oh, man. He's bugging. Oh, man. I know he didn't say that. Yo, you're being forced to fight. <laughs> you got the belt, Chip. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, and the other guys <clears throat> was hurt. He was at PBC. <clears throat> they try to, they try to make the... <laughs> oh, man. Then Bob tried to put you in a fight with Earl. And you diss them on live TV. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, stop it, TC. Look, look, you have. I heard you ask for challenges before. You just wasn't facing them. When it was time for you to go and fight them, you just didn't want to fight them. You opt to fight the 140 pound fighters. And I'm not mad. Well, <laughs> but now. You're being forced by the WBO. They made they made it. A man Sean Porter the mandatory and, and, and forced you to fight him. He's not being forced. <laughs> Your hand is being forced. So, but hey, look, I know you I know uh you've been asking for tough fights, and I think it'll be a good fight. Um here's the thing. I think I think I uh, do you want me to, I I Look, we all know Sean is a tough guy. Sean is a tough guy. You know what I'm saying? But I think this is just a this is good pickings. This is good pickings for TC. The reason why I say it's good pickings for TC is because while all these other guys was getting wear and tear on them fighting each other, the best welterweights, the real best welterweights were fighting the best welterweights. That's what was going on. You know what I'm saying? These guys were getting wear and tear on each other, and he was over there. Fighting guys, the smaller guys, Gamboa, guys getting shot up, everybody else. While wow, these guys was taking on the tougher challenges. So these guys got a little bit more wear and tear. I just want to see how Sean has been. Because Sean, the way he fights, his career, I don't know. It's just weird. You know what I'm saying? He, the, this, the way he fights sometimes, is like he, he doesn't fight to have longevity. Sean takes a lot of sh shots, too. He took a lot of shots with... um. <clears throat> with 
Earl, even though he did great in that fight, he took a lot of shots with Danny. Danny landed, landed the clean, effective joints in that. Um, I think TC would do well in this fight. I just think it would be a tough, tough fight. I, um, I mean, yeah, conspiracy. <clears throat> Yo, first of all, I'd just like to say the comments, man, y'all gave me a great uh, T-shirt idea for Caden. I'm always right 90% of the time. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah. that was really, and yeah. even when I was wrong, wrong I said the same right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we yeah. Well, the thing is, check my record. It's on YouTube. Oh, really? so that's all I got to say. Yeah, but um, in regards to uh, TC saying, you know, he's been begging for a real challenge, I actually agree with him. I think he's telling the truth. You know, um, we know that he, he was trying to get the Earl Spence fight. You know, and I remember the uh, interview with uh, Danny Garcia, and Danny was like, yo, they both want to fight. It's just no money in that fight, you know, and it, it just sucks right now for TC, you know. Mm -hmm. it's like, he, he just has to get out of that, that top-ranked contract. Like, he has to go over to PBC if he wants these big fights because, you know, nobody wants to risk. Like, ESPN and, and, and uh, PBC – don't want to, um, you know, or PBC Fox, whatever, wants to come together on that fight, you know. Um, so it's just a, it's a huge gamble financially. So that's why that didn't happen. <laughs> I think the WBO is like, you're going to fight at least Sean Porter. And remember, they tried to get the Sean Porter fight before. And Sean Porter, I believe, what well, he asked for a million or something. And Bob was like, hell to the no. <laughs> right. So, again, it's like Bob's like, yo, I'm, I'm not paying a million for this, you know. But I think this fight would be pay-per-view, you know what I mean? And then they could make the money on the back end. So I think now TC, I swear, TC, please, once this is your last fight under top rank, take your ass across the street, fam. Just do it, you know what I mean? But I will say this. I'm a little nervous for you, TC. So I feel like if it goes to decision, Bob might do you dirty, bro. So you got to go for the knockout. You better knock out Porter. Don't let it go to the, the, the to the judges, because I'm just saying, to Spiro G. I'm just saying. All right, TBE. Hold on, before you before you go, me, I gotta highlight my man, Handsome Three Jim. He said, "TC looking at Tank rubbing his hands like <laughs> <laughs> looking like Birdman in that meme, like <laughs> man." <clears throat> TC, I don't know. Yo. That that comment, he sounded real foolish when he said that um, he, he's been begging for a real challenge. And, you know, every time he was asked, he said he's not evil. He doesn't want to fight. He he says the opposite of what he just said. So, you know, TC, it's all cute, yo. And I know, yo, once this fight go down, I I hope this fight go down. I don't know. Bob's fight has been trending, uh, go, trending. Doing the having having a certain trend lately, so I don't know, man. I'm not gonna put it out there yet, but yeah, you know, TC man, you better be ready, man. I don't know. I, I think like yeah, like G said, once if it go to decision, Sean Sean got it if it goes to decision, yo. Cause Sean, I think Sean will like surprise surprise many in this fight. I was talking yeah. about Sean. I was talking about I was Bob. Bob. Bob gonna do him greasy, but I'm thinking Sean gonna get it. If it go to decision, it's all Sean. That's it, yo. It's all Sean. I don't see. I don't, I don't know. I don't see TC. I. It's, it's uh man. T. Yeah, TC. Just back it. You stop talking. Just get get in the gym, man. Yo, get ready for these um PBC fighters, man. Cause you've been you've been ducking them for a while now. You know. You know. I'm not. I'm not gonna say no more. But you've been ducking them. That's it. So here's the deal. I used to rock with tc i that's the thing that people don't understand they make it seem like oh you're someone when tc ran up on earl and earl said why won't i fight danny garcia why won't i fight sean porter first i don't think there's anything wrong with that get your bread make the fights those are big fights those guys actually generate money so i don't have any issue with it but he said why won't i fight those guys first he never said he wouldn't fight tc but I'm still thinking, TC wants to fight you, bro. You should try to negotiate something with him. So I was rocking with TC. But here's where TC lost me. When he re-signed with top rank, knowing that the guys in your division are on the other side. But he said, nah, you know, 
I'm I'm a, I'm gonna be loyal to Bob and whatever. So he resigned with Bob Arum. Okay, I already had issues with that, but then the way he started moving, the people he was selecting to fight, he's selecting to fight guys who are broken goods, damaged goods. Y'all can say what y'all want about Kell Brook, but Kell Brook was so damaged that his trainer, Dominique Ingle, was like, I'm not even bother going to America. No UK network with a reputation would even dare pick up that fight. And Eddie Hearn was like, I don't even need to get paid off this fight, bro. It is what it is, right? So now you look at his level of opposition. You look at the fact that he re-signed with uh, ESPN and top rank. Now here's the kicker. He says 50-50 split isn't even enough for him to fight Earl Spence. He won't even fight Earl Spence for a 50-50 split. He wants to fight Manny Pacquiao. Then he can't make a deal with Manny Pacquiao. Then he's supposed to fight Sean Porter, but then Sean Porter's asking for too much money. At what point does he get held accountable for not making the fights? Because I know people hold Wilder accountable. I know people, if Wilder did this, I know people would be holding him accountable. If Jamel Charlo did this, I know people would be holding him accountable. So at what point do people start to hold TC accountable? Why is it not TC's fault that he can't get the elite competition in the ring when he's the one with the belt. And see, there lies the problem. I remember Eddie Hearn having to overpay fighters to get them in the ring with AJ. But he got AJ them fights, though. You see, TC is sitting around here blaming everyone. But my thing is, if you were really begging for the challenge, why didn't you take the 60-40 split with Earl Spence when he offered it to you? Because you know that's a real thing. You know how I know it's a real thing? Terrence Crawford himself went to Twitter and confirmed that they offered him 40%. So why not take that? You know, I, Earl Spence taking less to fight Manny Pacquiao. You didn't want to take that with Pacquiao. You have someone who's made himself and put himself in a position where even his own sanctioning body is sick of him. His sanctioning body heard he was about to fight Zepeda, and they were like, yo, let's go. Thanks, fam. And, they, and people should watch that because nobody hated on TC in that video. But all of a sudden, we become these TC haters for telling the truth. I'm sick of hearing nobody wants to fight this guy. Listen, you're in boxing. If the money is right, if the contract is right, if everything is right, these people are going to fight. OK, so for me, him saying he's been begging for a real challenge for years. I've seen you talk about it on Twitter. I've seen you talk about it in a YouTube video that was circulated. But when it came time to send a real contract, you ain't y'all. Y'all always try to screw a fighter over when it came time for you to accept a real deal, a 60 40 deal, because when you ran up on Earl Spence, that wasn't an offer to fight. When Earl Spence was trying to negotiate 60-40 split with you to make a deal for a fight, you were loud about it. You went to social media about how, no, if anything, I get 60. So when it came time to really handle business, you was moving shady, TC. But it don't even matter to me no more because the WBO took care of it. We're going to see what you do with Showtime Sean Porter. Since you've been begging for it, well, it's here now. Well, yeah, like you said, what up, Rico? What's the word, my brother? Um, what I was saying, um, when when you asked that question, uh, Kaden, you know what I, we said it last week. It's not who's right; it's who's liked. So it could be another fighter would have did this, and like you were saying, if this was Wilder or anybody else, they would everybody would have went for his head. But it's not who's right; it's who's liked, <laughs> and that's what, and that's what I'm realizing. You know what I'm saying? It's not who's right; it's who's liked. Yeah, definitely. All right, Let's get to that next one. So we got uh, Bob Aaron believes TC versus Porter should be on pay per view. Do we all agree? Oh yeah. So Bob Aaron is basically saying that he thinks the fight should be on pay per view, and he's confident that he can work something out with PBC to get this fight on pay per view. Um, so let's uh, take a look. Uh, Aram on Crawford Porter. I'm optimistic we can get a deal done with PBC for a pay-per-view fight. 
All right. And here's the quote. Last year, there were no mandatories involved. Bob Aram told Boxing Scene on Thursday. This year, it's a fight that's been demanded by the WBO. And let's see how we can get it done. It's a lot different vibe when an organization mandates a fight that is a real fight. Uh, it's another thing when an organization mandates a fight that is not competitive, which happens so many times. But nobody can say this fight isn't competitive. You may want to tell some people in the Boxing Bros comment section that, Bob. All right. Um, let's uh, get down to what uh, he had to say. Um, Bob Arum also said this. F, leg F his legacy, Aram said. F any of that. He has to fight this fight to keep his title. And I'll leave his legacy or lack of legacy up to you. Terrence is a terrific fighter. He's fought everybody that we can get for him. And obviously, Porter is the biggest name that he will have fought recently. All right. So there we go. Bob Arum is saying that he's optimistic that he can work out a deal with PBC to make this uh, Sean Porter TC fight pay-per-view. Uh, Kaspira G, uh, what's your reaction? Do you think that this fight's pay-per-view and do you think they can work out a deal? Uh, yeah, I do believe uh, this fight is uh, pay-per-view uh, worthy. Um, obviously, Bob could uh, negotiate something with uh, PBC. They've done it with Wild and Fury, so why not do it with the welterweight division? You know, and hopefully, um, you know, this is, is a hit. You know, it really does depend on the price, though. I, I think the price point will determine if it's going to be successful or not. Um, but I do like to highlight uh, Bob's comments about TC's legacy. <laughs> yo, F his legacy, right? When I heard <laughs> you know what that told me, yo, Porter, you got this in the bag, son. You know <laughs> this in the bag. Just don't get knocked out. You about to get the dub. You know what I'm saying? And, and TC, man, listen. Yo, watch out for Aaron, bro. I don't like how Aaron's talking right now. Like, the fact that he's like, yeah, I don't care about your legacy and all that stuff. Talking about F your legacy tells me he's going to have a long convo with all the judges. They're not going to favor you at all in this fight, This bro. is a conspiracy G right here. This is a conspiracy G special. Here we go. How about this? The views and opinions of G. Ah, just just, just do your thing. Tell him he's not a conspiracy G. And then yeah, I'm just saying. Bob sound like he plotting on my man's TC, bro. TC, you got to go for the knockout. Even if you feel like you got every round in the bag. If you don't knock homeboy out by the 10th, I mean, by the 12th, excuse me, bro, we might see a draw or we might see an L. Either which way, Bob is going to do you dirty. So, man, just hold. You got to take your legacy in your hands. Don't let Bob do nothing crazy. All right. Oh, sure, hold on. Bro. I'll let yeah. you know salute to Arlette. Mm -hmm. What's up, Arlette? How you doing? Um, yes. I think that this would be a good pay-per-view fight. Um, why not? It's the biggest uh fight that he, you know, he has so far. <laughs> uh so yeah, I think it is pay-per-view um worthy. I just here's my thing. I hope they don't give us a trashy undercard. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I really like. They can, if they give us a, a decent undercard, then yeah, it'll be a, a great pay per view. I just, I just hope they don't just try to make this a good fight, and then next thing you know, we got three other. No, nah, Bob, give it up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 Bob, don't give it up. Bob, I'm gonna pay these other guys. <laughs> uh, I right, I bet you Bob will blame TC for that too. I had, I had to give TC all the money. <laughs> and he ended the car just like this. It's not my fault. <laughs> Yo, uh, TV. Nah, that's funny. Uh, I, I feel I feel G on this one, Bob. Yo, know, like F, F his legacy, a lack of legacy. Yo, know, that's like Bob's not like it was all good just a week ago, man. Like the last TC's last fight, them boys were standing together. There was they like Bob was holding them down. Then the Monday morning is F F F F F FTC. Bob come out of left field with like the TC slander. So at this point, TC yo, yo, you got like protect yourself. This this fight deserves to be on pay per view. By the way, 
this fight, this fight is a pay per view fight. I agree. I, I'll pay. I, I'll bo- let me not go there. I, I'm a. I, I'd watch the fight. I'd watch the fight. You hear me? I'd watch the fight if it was on pay per view. He said, "I'll bootleg it." I, I, come on, don't put words in my mouth. <laughs> but now, Aaron was fed up with this man, yo. You know, to this, yo, to slander this man like that—that's crazy, yo. I just, I just don't know, like. How like this is this is just an example of how things could go bad in a in a second. Like bridges could get burned so fast. So PC man, protect yourself. Protect protect yourself, King Yo, because ain't nobody. It seems that like ain't nobody looking out for you right now. So that's it. All I hear is nonsense. Like, and I just gotta uh, be real. Nobody's looking out for you. Bob Arum gave this dude a deal that nobody else would give him. Bob Arum gave him a deal that was lucrative for TC to fight competition like Kell Brook, to fight Amir Khan, to fight Cavaloskis, and he gave him a deal that was so lucrative, he took a loss on the deal. Bob actually took a loss on the deal. So if you think about it, you, you have Bob Arum now who has taken a loss on TC saying like, yeah, I want this to be pay-per-view, or yeah, I want to make sure that uh, that we're, I'm in a position where I'm going to be fully compensated for my investment. And you're talking about, oh, it looks like the fix is in. No, when he says FTC's legacy, F all that, he said, yo, I'm trying to get my money back. That's what, <laughs> that's what Bob, that's what Bob, and Bob Arum's been there. Bob's like, yo, I'm trying to get my money back. So when you talk about there's no one looking out for TC, I beg to differ. Bob Arum looked out for him tremendously. But when it came time for TC to say, I want to fight Earl Spence, he said he wanted to fight Pacquiao. When it came time for TC to, to you know, acquiesce to what Bob was telling him to do, TC had other plans. So just remember, they were planning on fighting Zapata. They weren't planning on fighting Sean Porter. And the WBO made Sean Porter the mandatory for TC. And so once the WBO makes Sean Porter the mandatory for TC, this is what I find interesting. Now, Bob Arum is optimistic he can work out a deal with PBC to put on a pay-per-view. So why is it once the WBO forced you to have to fight Sean Porter, you become optimistic that you could put on a pay-per-view, right? Why weren't you optimistic prior to that, right? So this, is, this tells you who really wanted to do what. Now that the WBO has ordered Terrence Crawford to fight Sean Porter, Bob Earn believes they can work together to put on a pay-per-view. You couldn't have done that without the order. So basically, once you were forced to fight a PBC fighter, that's when you were, you became optimistic that you can work with PBC to make the fight happen. And so that's my issue with the whole TC camp and this whole TC narrative and this whole TC thing. But once this fight, and, and it has to become official, because I'm going to be honest with you, it wouldn't shock me to see TC vacate this title, go down to 140 and challenge Josh Taylor for uh, Undisputed. It wouldn't surprise me to see him do that. But if this fight becomes official and they actually worked it out, this should officially put to bed this whole across the street thing. OK, and, and, and I don't know how can Porter be pricing himself out. Sean Porter has been in bigger fights than Terrence Crawford. Sean Porter isn't Sean Porter isn't some some I, I speak I speak the truth. You love TC. That's the difference. I don't hate TC. It's just you love TC. I don't love TC. You love them. So you're blind. You know what they say? Love is blind. So when you're blinded, you overlook the things people do. I'm just someone who's telling it like it is. That's it. You can agree. You can disagree. But all I'm doing is, is stating uh, the truth. So like like I said, with that being said, We'll see what happens with this uh, fight. But I think it's just real sketchy that once it was forced upon you, that's when you became optimistic that you can work with PBC. All right, all right. Let's go to that next one. So, man, poor TC. Fans clown TC for his comments about Jamel Charlo. Oh, yeah. And so just for the record, this happened prior to the WBO forcing 
TC or uh, ordering that TC has to fight uh, Sean Porter. And I'm not so sure that this didn't play a role in the WBO uh, ordering that TC has to fight uh, Sean Porter. So let me take a look at this real quick. All right. So this is from World Boxing News. And it says Terrence Crawford ripped for obscure four years after Charlo pound for pound comment. So. Let it load up. Can you guys see it? Yeah, we can see it. All right. All right, here we go. It says, oh, uh, so here's the article. It says, Bud has been slipping down the pound for pound list for some time and now stands at World Boxing News number seven spot, quipped about Charlo be, uh, not being on the list himself. Uh, the reaction from fans was swift. Some chose to point out Crawford has not fought anyone in the WBN pound for pound top 50 for four years. When it comes to the pound for pound placings, WBN has explained this fact on many occasions. The Americans last win over a fellow pound for pound star was Julius Ndongo in 2017. As it turns out, Ndongo's place properly wasn't warranted given uh, he's achieved, given what he's achieved since. Uh, therefore, there's an argument that Crawford hasn't faced a pound for pound rated opponent for longer than that. Regarding Charlo, Crawford said, I've been gone for a minute, but Charlo last night is the reason you not on the pound for pound list, sir. Got to do better. The replies came thick and fast. Some got Crawford's attention. That's what happens when you fight the best in your division. You get into close fights, something you haven't done at Walterway, even though you've been there four years, said one. Crawford came back. Yeah, I know. I know. LOL. Another added, at least he's fighting the best in his division. LOL. Can't knock him for that. The two time, well, the two time, the two weight champion said, been done, been, been done and did it. And a third stated, bud, you are my guy, but Castano. Uh, was a whole different kind of beast last night. It shows why he beat Spence, someone we all want to see you fight. Someone Charlo spars on the reg. Uh, and then he said, uh, he was good, Kastan, but before the fight, you see no one gave him a chance. Now they call him the best in the division, Crawford pointed out. A final insult to Crawford came in the form of right even that you are fighting nothing but Uber drivers. In concluding, Crawford added, if that's all I'm fighting, I'm sure I'm show making it look easy. So that's what uh, Terrence Crawford experienced after he went on there and said that uh, try to clown Jamel Charlo, basically saying your performance against Castaño is why you're not ranked in uh, the top 10 pound for pound list. And then the fans came in and started bringing it to uh, Terrence Crawford. So uh, what's your reaction to the fans clowning Terrence Crawford about his comments about Jamel Crawford? I'm going to turn it over to you, uh, Trill Dollar Bill. Trill, you're on mute. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm on mute. I was just laughing at all the brown nosing going on in the, in the comment section. <laughs> Everybody trying to get a date. He trying to get a date, trying to be on people's good side. Y'all better stop it. Um, what, what I'm saying is, <laughs> what, what I'm saying, all that stopping over there. You got these guys over here flip flopping in the conversation to get on your good side over here. Uh, Man, I don't care about nobody's good uh, side. I spit, <laughs> spit the real. We'll see, we'll see where it gets them. All right. Nah, I, I, you know, I, it's to me when I, I seen that, I was like, no. I was like, TC, don't say nothing. <laughs> right when I said, I was like, no, TC, don't, don't do it, TC. Don't do it. Um, right when he was talking trash, man, I seen that. I seen it. I seen it on, I seen it on um, Twitter. I put my head down. I was like, no. You just left the gate open for you, of course. Like, you can't throw stones, brother. You can't throw stones, brother. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, oh man, that's crazy. Like, I, I don't know, TC. I used this analogy before, man. That's like, <laughs> that's like you going out every day, every night. You know what I'm saying? You going out, you cheating on your lady. Every night you go out with the fellas. You know what I'm saying? On the weekend, and you cheat on your lady. That one day she cheat on you. You're like, oh, oh no, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like the world just ended. She ain't nothing. She ain't nothing. She's no good. You know what I'm saying? But nah, man. Uh, look, TC, you can't throw stones, man. You can't throw stones. All right. Uh, conspiracy. Yeah, um, man, listen. Yo, you know what's funny? Um, Yo, I like I like both. I like all of these dudes, man. I like Jamel. I like TC. You know, but TC did set himself up. Like he, <laughs> he set himself. You know, you know, Twitter's a different piece for one. You know what I mean? Like, and salute again to Irish Boxing Bro. I don't want no problems with Irish Boxing Bro on Twitter. You know what I mean? Mr. T, you too. <laughs> so I'm like, I can only imagine the type of uh like comments TC gets on Twitter. You know what I mean? Because we get like just a fraction. That's funny. It's, you know, when they troll us, it's funny though. You know what I mean? But like, TC, bro, you don't want the, you don't want the wolves to come out, bro. So you talking about Jamel Charles' performance, knowing that he's, he's actually fighting top competition. <laughs> humbly, you should just watch your mouth, you know? So like, he, he had it coming, man. So, but again, this doesn't mean like TC is not a, a great fighter. You know what I mean? Like, so this is where, like, because I, I could kind of – nah, I, I just don't see what Arlette be saying. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> nah, and the only reason why is, <laughs> like, yo, as a Wilder fan, right, like, I actually like Wilder, right? Now, I see the flaws in Wilder, right? I can still like him, but still acknowledge, like, hey, you know, Kanan got a point when he says this about Wilder when he says that about Wilder. Why can't you do the same thing with TC? You know, we could be like, hey – TC is a great fighter, but his resume is suspect. Like, it's, it's yeah, obvious. Can I, can I just, can I yeah. just we think he can more. fight. Yeah, he bro. just ain't fighting nobody. Bro. Yo, bro, you, you act like I'm a Spence fan, kid. I don't care if Spence loses. If Spence loses, I'm going to come on here so happy for Pacquiao, bro. Do you even know <laughs> what I think of Manny Pacquiao? That's my whole point. Y'all are so used to arguing with Spence fans, you don't know when you have someone objective in your mix, bro. I don't care if Spence gets his – I don't. if Pacquiao knocks Spence out in the first round, I'm waving my Filipino flag. The following Sunday, I promise you. I've done it before. You mm -hmm. may want – I don't know how long you've been watching us, but you may want to check this again. Y'all are an Earl Spence fan. <laughs> I'm not even an Earl Spence fan. I'm just – I just call BS when I see it. All right, well, all that part of me, because all that's saying she's not a TC fan. Okay. You know? Everybody right. knows that that's not true. <laughs> even, 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 even her brown noses in the comment section know that's not true. Anytime anybody says anything about TC, you can just set your phone to it. One minute, Arlette's going to respond. Bang, there it is. He even chimed in when <laughs> TC was talking. She knew we was talking about TC. Once she chimed in. Once she TC, yo, she just logged in. She wasn't in. even watching us, and she had the feeling. The boxing world was talking about TC, she was bro. Like, I came in at the right time. I came in at the right time. Oh, man, yeah. That's kind of crazy. I'm just saying, all that. That was kind of your time. It was, was, it, was it, it was phenomenal. Yeah, that was pretty tough. Spot on. Spot on. <laughs> nah, I'm back to you, G. My bad. Yeah, I, just, nah, I was just saying, man, it's like one thing about this show, man, is like we try to really be objective, not subjective. So it's not like we're like, hey, you know, we're going to just target TC. It's like, yo, come on, TC did this to himself. So we're going to talk about it, you know? Um, so, and then again, it's just like Wilder with all the Wilder antics, all the excuses, the twerking, all that stuff. Yo, there's times I'm like, damn, Wilder, why are you doing this to me, bro? You know what I mean? Like, it happens. You know what I mean? It's like you want to just be like, I don't want to talk about this. But again, it's news. You know? So this is what we're doing. We're talking about boxing news. So, you know, if, if TC gets mentioned, our apologies. But it is what it is. All right. Yeah, we got nothing but love and respect for mm -hmm. all these fighters who step in the ring. We just talking about decisions that some of these guys may make that we just don't agree with. It's just our opinion. We're not like 
Y'all thinking like we just kicking it to y'all like we kick it with each other. We giving you our unbiased opinion. You know what I'm saying? Yo, uh, every topic we talk about is not about TC. We T talk about TC like a fraction of the time. And the only reason we're talking about TC right now is because the WBO just ordered him to fight Sean Porter. Like that's the same argument that like while the fans, everyone, everybody claims all we do is talk about their guys. We talk about a wide variety of topics on the show. Probably we're one of the shows that have a uh, most diverse uh, mm -hmm. topic range. So to sit here and try to come at us, like just cause you don't like what we had to say about TC, nobody's bashing TC. You know what's funny? You said I'm bashing mm -hmm. TC. TC mm -hmm. tweeted and people I don't even know said the same thing to TC that I've been saying about him, right? And, and, and not only that, the World Boxing News article said the same thing I've been saying about him. So you have a large portion of people saying the same thing about someone and we're all bashing them. Why can't we all be in agreement about something and be objective? And maybe you and all the other people are wrong. Why can't we be right? And I'm not even saying that someone's right or wrong. It's your opinion. We have ours. It's a difference of opinion. Doesn't and mean we're bashing him. If we're bashing him, then what are you doing? Yeah, and the guy put up uh, uh, some in the comment section about a video that we did a long time ago about TC, where we showed no TC nothing but love. We showed TC nothing but love. We was just mad at certain decisions that he made, which is okay. Yeah, and also, can I just address Thank you for recognizing that. Hold on a second, brother. Let me Hold on, but Keith for life, right? Let's do the key for life. He's saying, yo, uh, except for G. Everyone's unbiased but G. He loves father <laughs> and hates uh <laughs> Ukraine. I always said Lomachenko is the top 140. Uh, he, hates he hates Usy. He hates Usy. I don't hate Usy. I just don't see He doesn't him. like any Ukraine fighter. Nah, <laughs> no fly zone, Ukraine. Nah, nah. See, I don't, I don't want this narrative pushed on me. Nah, it's just, he's just also being yeah, honest. Even with, even with Wilder, right? Yeah, I, I, you could probably call me like the Wilder fan of the group. Yo, there's times where I'm like, damn, Wilder, bro. Like, I, I'm still honest. I can still put my my support for a fighter aside and, and just be real. Be like, hey, what he did was wrong. Hey, he does need to work on some skills. He should not just only rely on the right hand. I've said all of that on this show. I think maybe it's just the way I respond. Oh, he was just kidding. Oh, all right, my bad. And I ain't never called Vitaly a bum. I would never do that. You, know? Gee, you haven't <laughs> called him a bum on camera. Yeah. <laughs> this is, yo, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is G, though. This is G's on G. Camera. Yeah. I love the Ukraine, but completely did a great Ukraine. <laughs> uh, uh, not even, man. Not even. Listen, listen. Vitaly and Vladimir, yo, great fighters. You know what I'm saying? They they held the heavyweight division down for a minute. Never showed hate. You know what I mean? Like, I really, <laughs> you, you really hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yo, G, I'm yeah. sorry to cut you off, but you was like, yeah, got nothing but love for Loma. But then my man Irish Boston bro pointed out Loma Duck and Devin. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Is that hate? Exactly. That? Is exactly. that hate? Was this? Or is it just an honest observation? <laughs> Yo, my man, you duck it, fam, but you still good. Uh, Yo, yeah. Rachel said that uh, Complex comes to the show and recharges G's batteries. <laughs> right. Keep them from, 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 from away from each other. <laughs> man, listen, man, listen, listen. I told y'all, I already got the call from the from the, the Klitschko brothers. I'm good in the Ukraine. Oh, man, yo, G. Get all up. Yo, Shame yo, on you, yo. Usyk, man, it's all love, baby. It's shame all love. Shame on you. Man. Shame on you, G. Shame you stay away from my you. fighters. You stay away from my fighters. We Gucci. Because once you start fighting one of my dudes, you food again. You know what I mean? Shame so, on you, G. It's all love. Right. All love. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, said some ill words about Vladimir, but I'm not gonna I, go there. Off I, camera. I Off camera. Off camera. Right. I give you permission. Off. Go ahead. Go ahead. What, Off what did camera, yo. So what did I say? Hey man, I, when we used to argue, you was going hard for Wilder before he lost, before AJ lost, before Wilder lost. When mm -hmm. we was big on AJ Wilder, me and you were sitting in the car before we were about to record boxing, bros. We had a deep discussion. I'm like, yo, you really think Wilder fought better competition than AJ? And you was like, yeah. I was like, but he beat Vita um Vitaly Klitschko. He beat um Vladimir. Vladimir my bad. And he goes, yeah. Vladimir's a bum. He's washed up. <laughs> <laughs> that was your exact words. <laughs> Never said that. 
At the time, this is what I did. I said, AJ beat a 40 something year old Vladimir Klitschko. That's what I said. I said, yo, he's old, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, I gave, and at the time, and this was at the time, I was like, I give AJ two wins Vladimir and Pavekin at the time. Now, I don't think the same way because AJ's resume has gone up. Wow, Wilder's Dude. resume has stagnated. Dude. So if you notice, I didn't make that argument anymore because AJ's taking the top right, 10. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me jump in on something real quick. You all are criticizing TC, but if you see him, you will love to take his autograph and a picture with him. Dude, do you know who you're talking to? Do you know how many pro fighters we've met already? Like, you know, like, you know how many celebrities I've met? Like, my dude, like, what? like, who the hell? Like, yo, you people are out of your mind. Who said that? No one. Nobody said that, right? Yo, bro, I, yo, listen, my dude, my dude, I'm telling you, man, you don't, y'all don't know who you're, what you're talking about. I know. Like, start, like being stuck, yo, bro, I used to see, I used to pick celebrities up from the airport, drive them to the hotel because we put on shows all the time, bro. Like, yo, you don't know what you're they talking about. They never post about. pictures of them. Yeah. Bro, you know how many pictures I got with me hanging out with celebrities and I don't even post it, bro? Stop it. Y'all crazy. I'm not, I'm not reposting no pictures I take with no celebrity. They they got to post it. If they post it, then I'll repost it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yo, oh my God. Y'all y'all be fanboying hard. No, that's what you would do. You would love his picture. You would love to get an autograph. Bro, when I go to the fights, I sit with all the fighters. No cap. Z was like that weasel foot. Virgil Hunter didn't walk. Everyone walks by us. Like, yo, what are you talking about? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. we way off topic. I, 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 I was supposed to speak on TC. <laughs> your TC. No, hold on. Hey, but let me just finish what Ned was saying. And even still, Ned, I've never called. Any elite fighter a bum, bro. I that mean, G, yo, yo, you know, we're not going to go there, dude. Oh, we're not going there. We're bum. not going there, G. We're not going there, yo. Come on, now. You... Yo, Hayden and Trill, have you ever heard me call any elite fighter a bum? That's one thing I don't do. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you going system, back for Wilder? Yes. No, bro. You yes. didn't that up. You believe that. Yo, I was G. Oh, my. I, I'm you done you you call the midgets. But I can't recall you calling them bums. <laughs> yeah, I thought, no, 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 the ants. But I, it wasn't me who said that. <laughs> it was it was your boy Chisora who said it. I just repeated it. But I've never disrespected any fighter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the only time I'm like, yo, that dude's a truck driver, but he was really a truck driver. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? I don't be like, yo, this dude's a bum. Like, how can you be a bum when Vladimir ran like he ran the heavyweight division for years? Now you making up, stuff. yo. Now you no, I'm not. You, you see, I'm making up like I made up. G G Cup talking about AJ's back, but you know, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all made up in my head. It's all made up in my head, but you know, I'm just saying, you may not remember it, G. You may not remember. Yo, you're funny, yo, now you funny. Man. <laughs> you're I'm just saying, you the biggest disappointment, man. You know what I'm saying? Yo, hold on. Hey, did you even say that? I'm just saying. You got to love the comment session, right? Because y'all are like our homies. Because y'all are sitting here instigating. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> y'all are yeah. instigating the beef. Like, yeah, I'm with you. Nah, I'm with you, Ned. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, hold on. Yo. That got G shook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm just, I, I, it made me, for Ukraine, man. You know yo, I'm just saying, G, before Wada lost, <laughs> G used to go so hard for this man. Like, G would disrespect every fighter in the eyes of, like, when it came to Wada, all of these guys was bums, yo. They, they died to the right hand of God. That's all I'm saying. Hold on, hold and, on. Hold on. Yeah, I did say Wilder would knock them all out, but that don't mean they bums. I think you misunderstand. I think. Yo, the way I talk, people misunderstand what nah, I'm saying. Nah, like, the way you talk, yeah, nah, I get how you were talking, but you uh, said it. Usyk, you right? said I'm it. Not, that's the all I'm saying. Nah, you I'm not disrespecting Usyk. Like, I think Usyk's still a great fighter. I just don't feel Usyk could beat these top tier heavyweights. But people, for some reason, taking it as like, y'all, I'm disrespecting Usyk. I'm disrespecting the Ukraine. Like, I'm like, bro, I just think he's Ukrainian suit for the big boys. That's all. But other than that, he's a man. You know what I'm saying? Like. Hey. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying, G, you don't talk crazy about a lot of fighters. 
<laughs> you may not recall it. We're going to talk crazy about a lot of Fridays. No, that's all I'm saying. You all right, we got to get, 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 go. get it rolling. We got to get it rolling. I got to pray for my child, yo. This is crazy. <laughs> 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 Next time. Oh, um, Jamal sends a message to boxing fans. All right. Yeah, so Jamel Charlo uh, put up a post after his fight with Brian Castaño. And basically, man, there's been a lot of talking online. Some people are saying it's a robbery. Some people are saying that, you know, they thought it was a draw. Some people are saying they feel like Charlo uh, squeaked it out. But Jamel responded uh, on his Twitter and uh, he posted some pictures. But uh, here's what he wrote. He wrote, Brian Castaño is one hell of a fighter than anyone gave him credit for, and he came to fight for his life Saturday. If fights are scored as a whole, I landed the harder and better shots. But boxing isn't scored that way. Boxing is scored round by round. I've always said to take a belt from a champion, you need to take that belt, and the judges felt neither of us did enough to take those other belts, and they ruled a draw. I don't want to become undisputed by a narrow, controversial decision. I want to make a statement. I didn't do my part to get the KO. And as always, I will continue to learn and improve. When we run it back, just like I adjusted in Harrison 2, there will be no doubt about the result. Hashtag Lions only for life. So that's what Jamel Charlo had to say about uh, his fight with Brian Castaño. Uh, Kaspira G, what was your reaction to that? Um, yeah, I actually agree with his statement, you know, um, Castano came to, came to win. You know what I mean? He understood that this was a life changing fight. You know, um, he came to the States to prove to the world that he should be undisputed. So I, you know, you can't knock, I can't knock Jamel's performance and you can't knock Castano's performance. It was a great fight. You know, like I, I honestly thought it was a draw. Right. And I think they should run it back. You know, um, and that does, just because people don't know who Castano, uh, am I saying his name right? I hope I am. You know what I mean? Castano? Castano, that's how yeah, they were saying Castano, yeah. Like, um, just because you don't know who Castano is doesn't mean he's not a top fighter in that division. So, you know, Jamel, man, like, I appreciate that statement that he wrote, man. Uh, hopefully, um, you know, the fans respect it as well, you know. Um, yeah, so I, I'm in complete support of that. Uh, that post. All right, show the bill. This reminds me of <laughs> April 6, 1987. And the fight dubbed to be the super fight between Marvelous Marvin Hagler and Sugar Ray Lenny. For the lineal in uh, the middleweight title. To this day, people were up in arms on who won. Some people say it was Hagler with his aggressiveness, you know, and coming forward and trying to make the fight. Some people say it was Ray with landing the most, most shots and his ring generalship. That's what happens in close fights and in good fights. Um... The debate will go on. Unfortunately, Marvin Hagler retired and we couldn't get a rematch because he was disgusted by what happened. Um, but fortunately, we might. We might get a, re we, a rematch with Charlo and Castano. And I said this before, I think that Castano, you know, um, fought a, a great fight, a brilliant fight. And I think that Charlo will make the adjustments that he needs to in the rematch. That's how I feel. But just like that fight that happened in 87, you know, some people are going to go, this is boxing. It's the beauty of boxing. We all, we're not always going to see it the same way, you know, but that's how you know it was a good fight, right? When, you know, 50% saying this person win, 50% people saying this, but that's how you know it was a great fight, you know? But see, like you said, Marvin got robbed. Some people say Castano got robbed. People that said that Ray won. People that are saying that Charlo won. But you don't know. It's the beauty of boxing. All right, TVE. 
Nah, that's dope. Um, sportsmanship, like you know, you know, you giving them, you highlighting Brian, you letting him know he wasn't like, uh, you know, I thought you was gonna walk over the man, but he proved himself to me, and you know, you respect the man as a fighter. You showing, you showing love, you showing support, and you letting people know like he how good he is. You like you you you're bigging up your opponent, and that's that's pretty dope for the sport. And you know that's that's dope that you did that, and I respect it. I respect it, and I applaud that type of um. Those type of antics. So shout out to you, Jamel, for that. But you know, let's get it back. We need that part too. Yeah. So I scored a fight 115, 113 for Jamel Charlo. I watched the fight again and I scored it the same way. Um, I think it was a very close fight, but you have to look at what was happening. For example, early on in the rounds, for about two minutes and 30, sometimes two minutes and 40 seconds in the round, Jamel Charlo was controlling range. He was throwing jabs throughout the two minutes and 40 seconds of the round. And Castaño didn't really work until the last 20 seconds where he will come in and throw a flurry. Now, if you have a television like mine, you can slow it down frame by frame and actually see what punches landed and what punches didn't land. Castaño didn't land a lot of these punches that he was getting credit for by uh, punch stats, which is one thing, but that's fine. The thing that I think causes um, people to see this fight differently is if you're someone who likes ring generalship, you like boxing, you like controlling uh, the fight, you saw what Jamel was doing. He was keeping the bull at bay. When you talk about Castaño, you're talking about someone who throws a lot more punches a fight per round than he did against Jamel. And that's because Jamel was able to tame him and was able to land his punches and his shots as well. And Castaño, when he was able to get Jamel on the ropes, was able to unload his combinations. And sometimes he landed the better work. And those are the rounds that I gave him. Um, however, right, when you look at some judges, some judges don't believe in allowing you to steal a round. So they feel like if you didn't work for two minutes and 40 seconds of a round, you can't win it in the last 20 seconds. That's how some judges feel. And so all I am saying is it seems like um, Castaño, you know, didn't <clears throat> and watch the fight again. I watched it again. So I watched it and I had a debate with a bunch of people. We sat down, we watched it on the television together. And all the people were overwhelmingly talking about how great Castaño did until I pointed out, here we are, mm -hmm. two minutes, 40 seconds into the round. Then he threw a flurry. And then they were like, damn, you know, he really didn't. He really did wait until the last two minutes and 40 seconds to throw a punch. Mm -hmm. And then they realized how much of Charlo's work they were overlooking. They were overlooking the clean jabs yeah. he was landing. They were overlooking when he would land a right. <laughs> In those exchanges, when Castaño would hit Jamel, Jamel would hit him back sometimes. And they didn't even notice that. Go ahead, bro. I just wanted to, and you, you're, you're, you're doing a hell of a job there, my brother. I just wanted to jump in because you know what it is, bro. 95% of it, and I say this before and I'm going to say it again. Yo, when you don't like somebody, right? When you don't like somebody, you judge a fight in a different way. Like, especially if you speak a season you know, you think somebody's supposed to be so much better than somebody, you start judging a fight in a different, in a biased way. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I think in a lot of ways, he was, uh, uh, a victim of that. Charlo was a victim of that. One, not being liked, and two, being good, and then somebody doing such so good towards him. You know what I'm saying? Doing good against him. I think that's what he was a victim of. Yeah, nah, put, put, VP, of put VP up because this is a uh, yeah. He said, "Look bad for Charlo because he was shelled up on the ropes, letting Castaño throw, and never looked to win a round." So here's the, here's the thing, and I agree with you. And this is why when I said he, he needs to tie Castaño up in the second fight and people say, oh, that'll make it a boring fight. Mm -hmm. But because you people who don't really judge clean punches just see that activity and you get, you know, uh, enamored by it. You're That's mesmerized by the activity. That's strong quarter flow. Yeah, yeah. you're mesmerized <laughs> by the activity and you're not really looking to see what's landing clean, right? So if you're Jamel, you can't even let him, you can't even let him excite his fans. As soon as he jumps into you in the corner, just hold him. Make the ref break you up, you know? And even if you lose a point eventually, that's still better than losing three or four rounds because you let this man work. So that's why people hold. Because sometimes, like, boxing fans who aren't really at that scoring, they're, they're just looking at this activity and getting excited by it. But I, I challenge anyone, watch that fight again. 
Castano didn't do work until no commentary. Thirty seconds. Yeah, he didn't do work until two minutes thirty. Sometimes yeah, two minutes forty several seconds. Rounds. Several yeah. rounds. Several yeah. rounds. Yeah. Yeah. Like, come on, round. man. You can't. You can't. You can't tell me. But this is what real judges are supposed to be looking for. This is what real judges who were trained and understand are supposed to be looking for. That fight was no robbery, like Trill said. It could have gone either way. If Castano would have won, I would have been up here like, "Yo, salute to Castano. He earned it. Put him in the top ten pound for pound." That's what I would have been saying. But that's not what happened. It was a close fight, and I want to close with this: salute to my man. So I agree with Caden. When I first watched it, I said Castano, but on second watch, I analyzed it more and thought it was a draw, a fair result because Castano tried to steal rounds. Exactly. That's all I'm saying. Just be objective. Just be objective about it. I respect Jamel Charlo because I see so much growth in that dude. I remember this was a dude who used to just act off a of raw emotion, and he's still an emotional guy. But to see the way he was with his brother, the way he reached out, the way he went over to see his brother, to see him give it his all in a fight for Undisputed, to see the way he responded to a controversial draw. How he I handled got so it? much respect for him. Yeah. How he handled Yo, it? That he, Twitter, he, that he Twitter turned, post? Hey, he's man. turning me into a fan. He's turning me into a fan. Exactly. And, and that doesn't mean that I don't like Brian Castano because I do. And I, I already I already had respect for Castano and I was already telling everyone. This is the best fight in the best. Like, people didn't know Castano. I'm like, yo, you need to see it. I got mad respect for Castano, but I never questioned Castano's character. There was times when I was looking at Jamel like, oh, man, this guy is whatever. So to see the growth for him, I just want to salute that and, and show uh, respect to that as well. Definitely. All right, next up, we got um, IBF orders Jamel to face his mandatory. Yeah, so unfortunately, after... Uh, Jamel posted that tweet saying that, um, or on IG saying that he wants to fight Castano again. Uh, there was a ruling that the IBF ordered Jamel Charlo to fight uh, his mandatory. And it says, uh, Jamel Charlo in this name, oh man. <laughs> Akram Martavilov. Hey. Hey, if buddy. I mispronounced the name, I apologize. It was my best attempt. Uh, but it says that uh, the IBF orders him to fight him uh, and fight his mandatory. And hopefully, well, I'll, I'll let you guys decide. I don't want to sway it. But uh, Kaspir G, what's your reaction to the IBF ordering Jamel Charlo to face a mandatory after this close fight for Undisputed? All right. So y'all going to hate my answer. But I understand what the IBF has to do. Remember, these are governing bodies that monitor boxing around the world. So I'm assuming these are some Eastern European guys that work their way up, that, you know, this guy worked his way up to become the mandatory. So I can't hate on that. You know what I mean? I just don't know who he is, you know. Um, and it kind of sucks because uh, a lot of casual boxing fans would be like, oh, you, you ducking that rematch. And it's like, nah, bro. Like, he was ordered to to, to fight the mandatory. But. You know, we all obviously we want to see uh, Jamel and Castano run it back, but you know, it it happens, man. You know, like undisputed is really, really hard. It's a rare thing to accomplish in this uh four belt uh, uh era that we're in. You know what I mean? And so, I can't get mad at the IBF, man. Like, cause to me, it's like think about you paying. Everyone's paying some type of dues. They're paying their their fees. They're they're waiting in line for like forever. So when a person has the opportunity, they can't just be like, oh, but, you know, the Castaño fight was so great. We should allow them to run it back. Like, governing bodies can't do that, bro. So I'm not mad at uh, Jamel having to um, face his mandatory. It's only right. All right, true dog, bro. Um, when does he got to fight <laughs> like, can he fight him after this rematch? You know, maybe. Well, they're, ordering it, they're ordering it to be his next fight. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that they can work something out. I'm sure they could work something out. They, people don't work things out before with the IBF. They, you know what I'm saying? They could work something out. And if not, um, hey, everybody deserves a shot. But if, I'm sure they'll try to work something out. I, I really think so. You know what I'm saying? But, um, hey, it's, it's part of boxing. Oh, hey, <laughs> if, if Francisco, if you could tell me what country he is, I would try to give you an accurate food description. <laughs> He's from Russia. Where are you from? You from where? He's from. He's from Russia. You sure? Yeah. 
I don't even know what they eat in Russia, bro. I'll, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, man, somebody text, yo, just put it in the chat what kind of Russian dishes that are out there. You know what I mean? And we'll figure it out. Baka soup. Mm -hmm. Gee, you yeah. need to expand your uh, palate. You need yeah, to get know, more uh, food. You know what I mean? <laughs> we rely on you to be our food expert. That's what's coming. That's, that's what's coming next. Spin off of a boxing road, G's cooking show. <laughs> what, what oh, Every dish is going to be named after a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right, oh, TBE. Background sounds like back rub pause, you know, but you know. Yeah, what's wrong with you on these backs, son? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, hey, man. Back rub. <laughs> mandatory, mandatory's got to get get attention sometimes, man. You know they gotta get they gotta get mandatory's gotta get shown love sometimes too. Yo, we want all these big fights to happen, but you know we got guys on the sidelines just waiting, and you don't want them to like miss their opportunity or they get the, they they want their time to shine. So let let, let my man back back rub, yo. That's that's his name, yo. Back rub. I'm a fan. I'm gonna follow you on Instagram. Let my man back rub get a shine, yo. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> yo, back rub got our only fans. It was <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> yo, exactly. Abort mission, bro. You wilding right now. Yo, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you, man. This is I like the rules of the sanctioning bodies when it's to give someone an opportunity. Like, for example, we were just talking about how the WBO forced the fight between TC and Sean Porter. I think that's good use of your authority to force someone to defend the title. However, I think you need to take the human element into account and understand that fans do want to see Undisputed. And as fans, we do want to see the belts unified and we do want to see uh, one face, one champ, one name. So I think although... You know, I don't want to say the name. I was about to say what Ned said. Although the mandatory challenger has earned that spot, right? Postponing the title shot to allow Jamel and Castano fight each other again because that's what's best for boxing. I think what's best for the sport should trump everything. And then after that, you can break the belts up again or do whatever. But I feel like the lack of undisputed champions since we started the four belt era has hurt boxing. And that's why I feel like um, we need the, we need these sanctioning bodies to understand when we have a fight like Jamel Charlo and Brian Castaño too on the horizon, we need to make sure that the fans get to see that fight. Cause to me, this fight's going to be bigger than the first one because of the controversial decision because of the people who are like, oh, Castaño won because Jamel's going to want to prove himself. And they're going to be people who feel like Jamel was being critiqued unfairly. Uh, Argentina is going to back Castaño more based on his performance. And so I just feel like we'll be robbing the sport of a great fight. Not to say that the mandatory doesn't deserve their shot, but you have to consider the human element. We have a bigger fight for the sport of boxing right now, so let's not ruin that. So that's just how I feel about the situation nah, right now. And I agree with you a thousand percent, yeah. man. Like, let him get the winner. Because <laughs> Donald can mess around and not be able to get another fight with y'all. This boxing is weird like that. Like, you might... There have been plenty of times it's like, oh, this is a good fight. They should have a rematch. And then the fighter goes and fights somebody else. And then this fighter goes and fights somebody else. And then none of the fighter loses. And then people lose interest and messes it up. Question, though. Can the IB, does, does uh, fighters in the IBF, can they take step aside money? Probably. Yeah, everyone can take step aside money. money. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't think the fighter should have to do it, though. I think they should grant him the opportunity to fight. You know, they, should, they shouldn't have to pay step aside. They, the IBF should grant Jamel Chalo, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, they should give him an exception to fight Castaño. Because what we're talking about is making a superstar. And that's what boxing needs, superstars. The winner of Castaño versus Jamel Chalo rematch is going to become a superstar. So, like, what are we doing? Let's make another superstar. That's what we need. Facts. All right. All right. Let's get, let's, oh, man. This is my, my favorite little guy right here, right now. Uh oh. Smoke with Devin Haney. Oh, man. Yeah, man. So, uh, Roly wants that smoke with uh, Devin Haney. And uh, Roly 
What? Did he get taken down? Oh! Yo, G, it got taken down, bro. Roly Spicy Talk got taken down. Hold on, man. This can't be. We apologize, everyone. The video has been taken down, so we're going to try to... They're hanging on greatness, man. <clears throat> they don't want my little man to be a star. You feel me? <laughs> oh, man. I should have... I should have downloaded that video. I got it. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's mad long though. Um, Roll the short bus. <laughs> huh? Roly rode the short bus. <laughs> yeah. Actually, actually, Roly really, really, you will cry if you hear Roly's story. But Roly has really, really been through some really hardships in his life, and you can tell by the way he acts. You know what I'm saying? But we're not going to get into that now. But once you do a little backstory on Roly and find out how he grew up and the things that he had to overcome, I think that you will have a little bit more compassion for him. I'm just keeping it 100. That could be true, and he could still ride the short bus. Actually, I think he did ride the short bus, but not, I'm just saying, still. <laughs> He went through a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? All right, hold on. I, I don't know if this is it. This is a boxing fuego. Hey, 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 it ain't nothing wrong with riding the short bus. Shit, I had to get on the short bus, and my school was directly across the street. He's number one. All right. true, true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all ready? Yeah. Here's, here's what, here's what Roley had to say. Oh, hold on. These are all jokes. This is no disrespect to anyone who really had to ride the bus. We're just the views of the people sharing jokes and laughs. We don't mean to offend anyone. We have love and respect for everyone. All right. Uh, here's uh, this uh, video, uh, what Roly had to say. This is courtesy of Box and Fuego because I can't find the actual video. Haney's number one. Fake ass, Mexico ass, fucking email ass champion. Daddy bought his fucking career. Daddy bought him a fucking win in Mexico that they raised the other motherfucker's hand. I, yeah, Cruz. Cruz. He's talking about Cruz. I seen that. Y'all can all go fuck yourself. Devin Haney is the biggest bitch, not just at 135, in boxing. So don't give me that shit. Devin Haney is the biggest bitch in boxing. If I'm so easy, fight me. And fucking whoop my fucking ass. But no, because he knows he's a chinny, frail ass little bitch. <laughs> Yo, y'all were able to see that, right? We seen it, man. We seen uh, it. <laughs> we seen it. <laughs> 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 All right, yo. Yo, Trill, man, this is your man. So what's your, reaction? Man. What's, your, what's your reaction to the this video? This my man. Hey, listen, I'm just going to start this off by saying, hey, look, I think Devin will win, but I ain't mad at Roley. Look, Roley, you got you to gotta do a Roberto Duran. You got to do a Ricardo Mayorga. You got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to make these fights. You got you to gotta talk that trash, and hopefully you can talk yourself into a big payday and into a big fight because that's the only way you're going to be able to get fights. Sometimes Roley had to pay fighters out of his own pocket just so he could get a fight. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not mad at him. I'm not mad at Roley at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's trying to get a fight. He's been trying to get a fight with one of these dudes. Um, Roley, keep yelling. Keep talking because that's the way that they're going to make it. Even Floyd told him to. Ro Floyd said, keep talking. You got to make yourself a star. He got to make himself a star. You know what I'm saying? And that's the way he's going about it. He's trying to go about it the villain way. I'm not mad. Any way he could try to get a fight, he's just trying to any way he could. And it's helping him because him talking trash is getting Roley everywhere now. Now you're starting to see him step by step. You're starting to see him everywhere. Now everybody's talking to him, even if it's in a bad way. They're starting to mention him. You know what I'm saying? Long as they're saying your name, especially in this, in the media, it's, it's good. You know what I'm saying? So... I don't think Roley, Roley can win, but I understand what he's saying. And he's bringing up stuff that people have no idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, people don't know. Unless you've been really following Devin, you've been in this boxing culture right there, you wouldn't know about Hector Garcia. You know what I'm saying? But Roley, 
<laughs> Roly knows about Hector Garcia. He's been following Devin. He knows about the situation. We heard about what his pops did. We heard about certain situations. Look at Roly, keep talking. Roly, keep talking because eventually these guys, I got to come to you and um, look. Do you Duran? You know what I'm saying? Like my man said it. I'm not mad. You see, and you see what Duran did, right? Duran assaulted. I'm not saying it's a good thing to do, but he was he was disrespectful to uh, Leonard's um, uh, wife, right? And it got in Leonard's head. They, he lost that fight. You know what I'm saying? The brawl in Montreal, right? He lost that fight. I love boxing. He lost that fight because he started fighting Duran's type of fight. Maybe uh, Roly could get into Devin's head like that and make him fight in a, a, a crazy fight and, 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 and Roly can catch him. We don't know, but I'm not mad at Roly. Try to get that fight if you can. Um, hey. I here, G. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't necessarily like his uh his video, but I like the fact that he's playing the the villain. You know, I I, I kind of feel like man, you need an antagonist sometimes to sell a fight. You know, and think about it, hit like he doesn't really have a resume like that. You know, but he has the gift of gab, and the gift of gab could get you those big fights, those big paydays. You know, um, Devin's with uh with um with uh the zone. You know, I think that'll be a good fight on the zone. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't think it'll be pay per view worthy, but definitely on the zone, I'll watch it. You know, so Roly man, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Just I just know when you get in that ring, you're gonna be food though. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we in because he's like, well, he's a, he's half black, half Cuban. We in. Uh, Cuban enchiladas that day, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's gonna be bad for Roly, man. Roly, you too flat footed. There's something wrong with your foot, your leg, like both legs. There's something wrong with you, bro, in that ring. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think you can rough house your way through a victory with Devin. So, um, but Godspeed with you, bro. Like, mm -hmm. I would love to see that fight, but it ain't pay per view worthy, at least not yet. I need to see that on the zone. Not only, not only Brona and Roly, I like um Prince, the Prince, not seeing my man too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like fighters like that. I like Muhammad Ali too. That talk trash too. The Louis, the Louisville lip. You know what I'm saying? All right, we're not about to put these guys on a level of Muhammad Ali. No, but I didn't say the I way they talk trash, trash and the way Muhammad Ali trash. talk trash was completely different. You know what I'm saying? But he still, I like talk trash. I'm not saying skill level. I'm talking they talking trash. I like fighters that talk trash. The Roberto Durans and all of them. Yeah, you and know what? The way Roberto Duran talk trash is a little different than the way these guys <laughs> are talking trash. But I, I feel what you're saying. There's, yeah, to me, there's a clear distinction though. What is that? Uh, yeah, the black beans and rice, right? It's some. What's it called? The uh, the Cuban dish. That's what Roly is, because. My man, there's no way. If Devin loses to Roley, bro, man, it's yo. And when, when I was saying about Muhammad Ali, I know you said about Muhammad Ali, but you got to understand Muhammad Ali wasn't as cra uh, uh, classy as what you may think. Because when he was calling uh, 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 the Fraser a, 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 a monkey at a time where, you know what I'm saying, it could have been looked at a big gorilla, Frazier took that a little differently. Uh, they lie, they lie. I don't. I don't want to get into a debate on Muhammad Ali. Oh no, it's not a debate. I'm just, Ali, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Muhammad Ali is Olympic gold medalist. Oh yeah, yeah. Three time yeah. heavyweight champion of the world. One of the greatest ambassadors of civil rights ever. And ever. we're, we're talking. We're talking about him in Roley. Oh no, no, I'm not comparing. I'm not comparing. I'm, not comparing. I'm just talking. I'm just saying about trash talking and the things that have happened in history. Well, like, what he, what, when what he was he has a fit. He. Had, he has offended. He has, he offended uh phases against Joseph. He's a yeah. He, he's 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 he has. Yeah, he did go too far with Fraser. Fraser. I, I totally he, agree he with you. He offended. He offended Fraser, but he, he went also apologized to Fraser. He apologized to Fraser's son. He told Fraser's son that he's the best fighter he's ever been in the ring with. He's he's done he's done that, and he also told Frazier's son that everything he's ever done was to sell the fight. Sell the fight. And I know, even, to sell the fight. Even, like these even, kids are trying to sell fights. And even in the situation between Ali and Frazier, you have to look at what Ali was dealing with. Ali was stripped of the title because he refused to go to Vietnam, and Frazier won his vacant title. He never lost the belt in the ring, so he saw Joe Frazier as a symbol of their guy. A symbol of what was holding him back in comparison to Roley, who's just capping and doesn't even deserve really a title shot. 
So I think like, you know, to try to make these comparisons cool, but like there's this, there's a lot, there's difference. You have a system that was designed to keep Ollie down, like literally the system that was put in place to keep him from fighting and earning money that he saw Joe Frazier as a symbol as in comparison to Roley, who's just capping to try to get a fight that he doesn't really deserve and that he really didn't earn in the ring. Now, I totally agree with what you're saying. We're taking it too far. We're talking about uh, the, the great Muhammad Ali. I get it. The great Muhammad Ali. I was just talking about the trash talking and, and how it affects certain people. And like, you know, like when he called uh, Frazier Uncle Tom at that time, that period in time. That was horrible. That was worse than calling somebody a bitch. Again, I understand that it's horrible, but the reason why he was calling Frazier Uncle Tom was, again, because he was stripped for refusing to go to Vietnam, and then they made Frazier the guy. They gave it all to Frazier. So he was saying, you play their game. You don't stand up for our people. I'm not saying that it's right because I believe there's more than one way to represent the community. Mm -hmm. Just like us, when we don't pick Deontay Wilder, they say, oh, y'all are not black. And I don't agree with that. I understand that that's wrong. But in, that time, money. but in that time, you have one guy who's seeing himself as the symbol of the movement, the symbol of a struggle. And he sees another guy who's benefiting off of keeping his mouth shut and not being as uh, vocal and not protesting as much as he is. And so, yeah, he said that. That's all wrong. But again, all that's way more meaningful than what the hell Roley is doing right now. So to make the comparison to Roley just captain for, yeah, he called Sonny Liston ugly. And he called all these people like, are y'all are serious? Like, this is, this is what I'm talking about. So what he said to these guys, you're, you're going to compare to Roley. Now, look, here's what I will say. I'm not against Roley at all. But to compare him to Muhammad Ali, to me, is just a little different. Different time, different circumstances different things. And also like you and I both know, you want to say he called him a monkey. Black people call black people other things that they probably shouldn't, but it's acceptable because they're black and because we're black. So to sit here and be like, oh, he called him a gorilla. It's not the same as someone else calling him a gorilla. Just like if I called someone the N word, it's not the same as someone else calling them uh, the N word. So let's not really try to paint this as like, yo, Muhammad Ali. At the end of the day, all I'm saying is, Ali's up here, Roley's down yeah. here. Let's not, let's not. I let's totally not. agree with you, my brother. It went totally different. I was saying trash talk is trash talk. No, and I don't have not. no problem with, with trash talking. You know what I'm saying? The greats have trash talk. That's what I was saying. No, I feel you on that. I feel you, know you on that. Trash talk is trash talk. And it shouldn't be nothing wrong with capping your way into a fight. Like, that's what that's what you should do. I just, you know, um, like, I, I just, the way people try to go at Muhammad Ali, and the way they try to discredit him, I just don't want to associate Muhammad Ali. Oh, no, nobody yeah. ever can ever dis yeah. discredit the greatest. He's the most uh, significant uh, uh, fighter athlete of the 20th century. Nobody was ever trying to discredit him. I love Muhammad Ali just as, as the next guy. And and I know, not, I'm not saying that you was. I'm saying I don't no. want anything we said to, to, okay. be, to be used. I, was to I, know, I, know how, I know how you feel about Muhammad Ali, but... The last thing I want is someone to leave our discussion, just like with the short bus stuff we were discussing. We know that no one would really be disrespectful. We know no one really has feelings that way. But we'll voice that opinion just to make sure everyone understands that we we don't share negative views towards people who may uh, ride a short bus. Right. So well, along with Muhammad Ali, I just want everyone to know we're not saying that Roley and Muhammad Ali are the same. We're not saying like they're everything's the same. All we're saying is trash talk in its purest form is trash talk. And, and even the greats have engaged in trash talk. So that's it. Not to say like, well, Roley's like Muhammad Ali. We're not saying that. No, right? no. <laughs> <laughs> we're not saying that. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot. Who was that? Who was up? Oh, um, Ned. Uh, now you're on mute, man. My bad. It's me. But Roley, I hope you enjoy your 15 seconds, man. That's it. <laughs> that's it. All right, I said, you know, and it was like, Roley's doing what he should do, I think. I think you have to look at it from this perspective. If he didn't just make that video, would we be talking about him right now? No. <laughs> uh, if he wasn't doing what he was doing, we would be talking about him? No. Um, do I think he could beat Devin Haney? No. But, you know, again, like I said, fights aren't one on paper. You got to get in the ring and you got to do what you have to do. And maybe Roley gets in the ring and shocks the world. Now, I'm not betting on it. 
and I'm putting my 90% on the line that Devin would beat Roley. <laughs> but, oh, uh, you know, he, 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 if you could cap your way into a fight, then you should. I mean, to me, like, that's just no one's mad at um, Logan Paul for doing what he's doing. No one's mad at Jake Paul for doing what he's doing. And to me, this is the equivalent. I'm like, hey, you're worth what someone would pay you. Right. So if Jake Paul can cap his way into a fight with Tyron Woodley, if Jake Paul can cap his way into a fight, then who am I to to get mad at it? If people are going to pay for it, the people are going to pay for it. So if Roley can cap his way into the fight, then why hold it against him? At the end of the day, man, it's just boxing. And Devin did just have a tough fight with um, Jorge Linares. So if he's looking for a respectable opponent just to get in the ring and a dance partner and you got this little bad blood element mixed into it, why not give Roley a shot? Roley's out there. So, um, you know, I have no issues with uh, the trash talk. And, and for me, you know, his video and whatever, it's just him. It's just him trying to sell himself. Yeah, but unfortunately... My favorite little guy, quit boxing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we we also have to talk about how um, Roley said all that he said to Devin Haney, and then he quit boxing uh, <laughs> shortly after. <laughs> so, uh, we're gonna pull up uh, Roley's tweet where Roley quits boxing. So here it is, right here. As you can see, on July 23rd, at 4.14 a.m. July 23rd, uh, Roley quit boxing. So uh, <laughs> uh, someone wrote there, Roley, you can't leave. The game needs you. <laughs> exactly. So, <laughs> chill dollar bill, man. What's, <laughs> what's your thoughts on Roley leaving the game? Um. <laughs> Listen, like you, said, hey, like you said, capping his way to it. I'm not mad. You can listen, people. If y'all don't, if y'all don't like Roly, that's fine. You don't have to like Roly. You don't like have to like him. But like he said, the biggest villain. He's the boxing's biggest villain. Who the f is going to be the hero? That's what Should've he said. Should have been. Should have been. Haney. Should've been. Mm -hmm. He said, "Who's going to be the hero?" And he ain't retiring because uh, just 18 hours ago, he posted on Instagram, welcome to the Roley era. With him holding up the belt. Like, so that's what you basically, what my man DJ is saying, Roley loves the attention. And he's just saying this for the attention. Like, look, um, like, hey, like, hey, Fizzy, I see you. Cap it till it happened. You know what I'm saying? He's, 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 he's capping till it happens. I'm not mad at Roley. Um, he's going to try to talk into existence. Uh, like, hey, 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 G, let me hold this from your man. Yes. Speak it, believe it, receive it. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? That's what my man Roley's trying to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's trying to speak it to his sisters. Maybe he can get some, some money. I'm not mad. I hear my man over there, Ben, talking about Ryan Garcia. Let him go. I'm not mad at him. Let him go and fight somebody. He's going to make it entertaining. You know what I'm saying? So, um, And I think we're going to see a lot more of Roley because he's doing what he needs to do. You know what I'm saying? And he's talking. He's talking, and people are talking, and we're talking about it. You know what I'm saying? So salute to Roley. I ain't mad at Roley. And somebody asked was uh, uh, the question, somebody from the UK, he said, what is the short bus thing about? Right? <laughs> let me, yeah, yes. Let me just let me just explain something about the, that, that short bus car. It means that somebody is not too bright. But that is not true, because like I said before, I even drove on the short bus. I even rode on the short bus, and the school was directly across the street. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? But um, Roley is, is – is, I'm not mad at Roley. He's doing exactly what he was supposed to do, and he's bringing attention to himself. He's promoting himself. Yeah, so you know, clear it up over what Troll is trying to say. <laughs> self, self promoting himself was used for students with cognitive disabilities. That's that's all it is. You know what I mean? So yeah, just leave it at that. You know what I mean? Sure. And I and I always got the honor roll. I was just I was just tired. <laughs> Man, Man Roey. Roly, you you got us talk about you, man. That's what keep doing that, man. Keep keep making us talk about you and actually perform. Back that talk up. You hear me? And then yo, 
you you got it, man. You got it, yo. But yo, that the talk talk can be cheap sometimes. But I I, I love it, yo. I love to entertain it. It's funny, yo. You're a funny guy, Roly, man. Keep doing your thing. Like I can't. That's it, yo. The Roly era. The Roly era. <laughs> Roly, you got something right now, yo. Just 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 hit the line and run. <laughs> Oh, I, I see that shining in too, G. You rubbed the glitter. Yeah, they talk about the Ukrainians that surrounded me, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm cool, though. I'm cool. Trust me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Thing well, it really is, I really just want. I just really just want to know what goes on in Roly's head at like 4:14 a.m. Roly was like, "You know what? I quit boxing." <laughs> <laughs> I quit boxing right now. And then I don't know what time he posted. Then you know what he said? You know what? Nah, quit. It's the Roly era. Look, I don't know what's going on with, with Roly, but again, uh, he's entertaining. He's hilarious. Uh, like I said, man, there's nothing wrong with using like entertainment and, and capping or people just watching you, the eyes on you to capitalize from it. Um, you know, a lot of people have done it. Like, as I said before, Jake Paul, Logan Paul used their celebrity to get fights. My man Lovejoy even capped his way into into a fight. You know, that's that's what it is. You know, um, if, if you if you if you if you have the people's eye and the people care enough to watch you. Hey, maybe. But you know what? The people watch them. The people are looking. The eyes are there. Look, here's the thing. You watch a fight because you want to see someone you like win. What do you have to do? You have to pay the money or you have to care enough to turn on a television to watch it. But if you watch a fight because you want to see someone lose, you still have to pay money or turn on a television. Either way, as long as you are going to do one or the other to watch Roley, that is all that matters. And it looks like that's what people are doing. So salute to my man hey, Roley. Listen, all right. reminds me. Reminds me of a time, May 6, 2006, the fight dubbed as the Danger Zone between Ricardo Mayorga and Oscar De La Hoya. (laughs) Mayorga disrespected Oscar so bad, disrespected his thing, two things he loved. (laughs) His wife. In his race. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he went out there, knocked him down in the first round. That's what Devin need to do. And that's what Roley need to do. He need to get in his head like Ricardo Mayorga. You know what I'm saying? Make Devin do a De La Hoya. That's what he need to do. Like the danger zone. All right. I just realized I didn't even go. I'm on my Larry Merchant today. Right, you didn't so, go? This cool though. I was just gonna say, man, obviously he's capping. You know what I mean? Like, yo, know, A B done quit before several times. Your man Lovejoy done quit before. You know what I mean? Just I, I think at this point it might be like a trolling thing on Twitter. It's just like, yo, you know what? Let me just say I quit for no reason. You know what I mean? And just like, yeah, I'm quitting boxing. Just so people could talk to him. You know what I mean? So I, I respect yeah. the hustle, Roly. I really do. He ain't going nowhere. He ain't retiring. The most retired <laughs> champion in boxing is who? Let's see if the people know in the comment section a little trivia. The most retired boxer in the history of boxing. We share the same first name. I'm just, just sharing Rachel's comment, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. Y'all gonna be choking on them spicy jollof rice cakes. Now you ain't the choke free, they're choke proof. It won't happen. It won't happen. <laughs> Damn, yeah, you got all that. You got it. Sugar, Sugar Ray. Ray. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Tell you. Oh, 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 we got two Sugar Rays, so you gotta say the last name. There's two of them? Hold on. I don't see Yeah, one. Sugar Ray Leonard. You got it. Yeah, there's two Sugar Rays. There's Sugar Ray Robinson and Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Robinson got his name because he was in the gym one time, and the guy was like, hey, man, your moves are sweet. Another guy was like, yeah, like sugar. And he was like, that's ain't he's stuck. You know what I'm saying? He got the name, sugar. Nowadays, you'll fight somebody for saying that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> his, real name was, 
His real name wasn't <laughs> Ray Roberts either. <laughs> you go, you go in the gym now and say, "Oh, you're sweet." What? <laughs> <laughs> Your moves is sweet. Yo, man, let me talk. Oh, yeah. This is my guy's side. Are, are you guys ready to move on to the next joint? Yeah. All right, let's go. All right. So next up, oh man, Logan Paul and Anderson Silva so are negotiations for a fight. Why? Yes. So according to ESPN. According to ESPN, oh, what is this? This is a different. Well, we got the wrong uh, link up. But ESPN did report that um, Logan Paul and Anderson Silva are in negotiations for a fight. And so we want to get your opinion or your input on what you think about that fight. Um, so, uh G, what's your reaction to Logan Paul and Anderson Silva? Uh, not interested, you know. Um, yeah, I don't even know if people are gonna really check for this fight to keep it on it. Um, Anderson Silva should win. Hopefully, he wins. I'd be, I'd be shocked if Logan could even pull out this victory. Like the dude struggled with KSI, bro. Like, come on, like. I don't know, man, but I'm not. I'm not knocking uh Anderson's uh payday. You know what I mean? Hey, if if you hey, you know what I mean? Any way you can find you know uh, free money that's not against the law, man, take it. So hopefully Anderson Silva becomes a multimillionaire uh, from this fight. But yeah, I don't really care for this fight, and I think Logan Paul's gonna lose. All right, trill dollar bill. Uh, it's a nice little shy, side show. Um, <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't be tuning into it, but I, I think unless they put some other box on the, the, um, the undercard, I'm not really, you know, it's cool. Though. Get your bread. Get your bread. All right, TBE. I wish he was fighting Jake, but, you know, Jake is taking on Tyron Woodley. So, you know, hopefully Anderson beats the brakes off this boy. So I could, you know, so I could just like enjoy. I spent, I, I glad I won't boo like the fight if Anderson is looking good in training camp. Like he looked like what he did against um Chavez Jr. and he looks good. And he's looking good in camp. I'll pay for this fight to see him beat the brakes off of Logan Paul. But if not, yo, I might have to just boo like it. You know, just well, just, now, even if he looks bad in training camp, he's gonna beat Logan Paul, bro. I uh, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like that's that's, it. that's, that's that, that enthusiasm that you got. You know what I'm saying? The silver, cause silver ain't and he ain't chiseled. That's why. Hey man, it's man. not even about that. It's just like yo, fix your mind, man. Hmm. Gee, you took you took your mind. You try to put my mind there. My mind's here, yo. Stop playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen. I don't know, man. Logan, I don't I, the pause. I hate how they like try to bastardize the sport, but I just want to see see somebody get in the ring and beat the brakes off these kids to let them know you can't play boxing because they they come out and they they want to fight. They want to put these MMA fighters in the ring so bad, but they never want to fight like like an actual boxer. Like like call out call out somebody relevant. Like yeah, he he fought Floyd, but we. I want. I want to see them. I just want to see them lose badly. I want to see them get slept, jaw broken, carted off. Sorry, yeah. I'm sorry. I know it's my mind. It's, it's evil. I don't want to wish evil on these kids, but cart it off, and they they learn a valuable lesson. That's it. Um, I mean, it's clear they got this blueprint where they want to fight like UFC fighters, retired UFC fighters, or. UFC fighters that are past their prime, even in their own sport. And and that's the blueprint that they're following. Anderson Silva falls uh, in that category. However, if, you, if, you, if you're saying you want to see Logan Paul lose, I think Anderson Silva still has enough to beat him. Although there's a huge size differential. And that's the thing that gets me. Uh, expectations have shifted so much simply based on the fact that Logan Paul is a YouTuber that people overlook the fact that he was about five inches taller than Floyd and outweighed Floyd by like 50 pounds. 
and everyone's saying like, oh, well, Floyd, you couldn't knock him out. And it's like, y'all don't realize that he's the smaller guy, like, and in, in, in just by being in the ring with Logan Paul was at a major disadvantage, right? Um, so when you look at Anderson Silva, he's a little bigger than Floyd, but he's still not as big as Logan Paul. So Logan Paul is going to have the size advantage and it's going to be, you know, similar. So it's just amazing to me that a fighter of Logan Paul size, basically a heavyweight, can make millions of dollars fighting a fighter that's 150 pounds and then fighting like another fighter that's 175 pounds. So um, I just feel like, you know, if Anderson Silva wants to do it and they want to do it, and like, you know, like Trill said, if they want to do the side show, then fine. But it's just, it's just amazing to me that um, you have a guy like um, Logan Paul, who's a heavyweight, and he gets to fight all these smaller people, and the smaller people have more expectations to win than him just because, you know, they're past their prime or whatever. So. <clears throat> big shout out. I want to give a big shout out real quick to uh, Keyshawn Davis. Um, he had a great win. He won the first win from the Olympics in the Olympics, uh, the lightweight division. I just want to give a shout out to him as a young boxer from Norfolk, Virginia. So salute to you. You know, one down, four to go, you know, in the Olympics. So one of the salute that young man. All right. All right. All right now we're down to our last topic. So my man. Ben, you know I mean Logan Ben versus Granado's predictions. You know I mean, so what's on your t shirt, oh, bro? So your t shirt, Whitney, bro? Whitney Houston. Oh, yeah, <laughs> kid, don't get better than that. It don't get better than that. Whitney's voice is official. You know I mean? oh, all right, all right, yeah. So basically, Logan Paul is fighting. I mean, Logan Paul. Ben Connor, uh, Connor Ben is fighting Adrian That's Granado. That's my dad's favorite songs. I'll let you better stop it. Y'all better stop it. Let the sun show begin. Harry, <laughs> Harry, step right <laughs> on in. <laughs> in the I we don't even sing the whole thing. Chill, 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 <laughs> so Rose R&B album coming, coming this, well, this Christmas. So if we on the second verse, we'll be like, is he going to stop right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. um, yeah, so we're going to give our predictions for uh, Connor Ben versus Adrian Granados. But first, you have to listen to what Adrian Granados had to say uh, about the fight. And this is courtesy of Eddie Hearn's uh, Instagram account. <laughs> Confidence is, is good, you know, that's what uh, what we all have, you know, me, myself, like I, I'm a confident fighter. I'm confident in my abilities. Um, I just don't talk on it the way he does. I don't got nothing bad to say. Um, just some of the things he said about me now, it's like, all right, boy, you're going to find out now because uh, I'm not I'm not anybody else you ever fought. Don't be talking all that mess because you're going to get humbled real quick. He's making it seem like he's going to dismantle me. He's going to destroy me. It's like, bro, like. You ain't nobody. Like, I didn't even know who he was until recently. Like, I got respect for the Ben name. I respect him because he's a Ben. But, you know, it's from his dad and what his dad has done. I know, you know, everyone was impressed with his fight with Sammy Vargas. But, I mean, he just kind of jumped on Sammy and Sammy wasn't expecting all that. And he stopped him. And that was good. That was a great win for him. Uh, but I'm not Samuel Vargas. All right. So that's what. Oh, Adrian Granados had to say about Connor Ben. I'm gonna turn it over to our lead predictor, Ned the T E E. Who you got? Connor Ben or Adrian Granados? No, I'm mute. I said they're in confidence too. Uh, all right, man, I got Connor Ben, yo. Granados is fool, yo. It's gonna be an easy, easy knockout for this man. Uh uh, I don't know when, but you know, Connor, Connor's gonna do his thing, sweep him up, add another winters. Yo, G, watch your mouth, and that's it. Point blank, period. All right, let's go on, Connor Ben. I'm gonna turn it over to Trill Dollar Bill. Who you got? 
man, I don't even want to say this, man, because I got so much love for him. I got so much love for Adrian <laughs> Ganado. To me, he's like one of those guys, man, who ain't never got a fair shake. You know what I'm saying? He won uh, against Amin so he can fight for the title at 140. They never gave him a title shot. He, he was forced to go up to 147 and become the PBC punching bag as we dubbed him on Boxing Bros. Now he's the, the, the zone punching bag, you know? Uh, and um, I just think he's took too many punches, too many. Um, I think that Conor Ben is going to stop him. It's going to, they're going to stop the fight. TKO loss. Conor Ben, just Granados, man, his best, better days. When he was supposed to be fighting for the, the, the better days, They the PBC did him wrong. Now he's just <laughs> – just a shell of his old self. Ben's All gonna right. stop him. There's gonna be a TKO. All right, conspiracy. G. Oh, all right, so what, what kind of food? Man, we eating Taco Bell fast food because <laughs> the Americans about to get violated early. You know what I'm saying? And this is why. We're not old man. No disrespect to you, bro. But you you were competitive against A B. That was a good fight. But you still got tagged up a lot you took a lot of hooks and uppercuts because you have horrible defense and you keep your chin up mm -hmm. all the time same thing when you fought danny garcia danny garcia and ab they have something in common they don't really throw a lot of punches but they kept connecting on you imagine what Connor ben's gonna do when he's gonna start letting his hands go you're done you know so i don't see uh uh granado's doing anything in this fight bro he's certified food we eat taco bell chalupas that day, you know what I mean. So, I got, I got, I got Connor Ben by a knockout. I'm gonna say fifth round knockout. All right. Um, I think Adrian Granados has seen better days. Definitely. Um, I think his biggest wins are behind him, and it's unfortunate. Like Trill said, we call him uh, the PVC punching bag. Like whenever they need to get a fighter back on track at 147. Insert Adrian Granados and Adrian Granados has been in there with Sean Porter as well. And like, you know, you just named a B is, is another guy, Danny Garcia. This he's been in wars. So you look at the wear and tear on Adrian Granados. I just feel like Connor Ben is, is going to put the finishing touches on Adrian Granados. I know in his mind, he's still competitive and you see him training and he, he seems like he's in good shape. And there's one thing about Adrian. He's going to go out there and give it all he has. So mm -hmm. if Connor Ben isn't on his A game, this oh, yeah. fight can get really well, interesting. Man. Yeah, this fight <laughs> can get really interesting. But I think Connor Ben is hungry to make his mark in the sport. I think Connor Ben has bigger fish to fry in his mind, although they're probably on the same level or even not as good as Adrian Granados in, in, in reference to Amir Khan and uh, Kel Brook. I think those are the guys he wants like next. So um, when I think about it, I, I, I see a stoppage. I see Connor Ben stopping him. And, uh, you know, like you said, it, it hurts to even say it because because I like Adrian Ganado. So I think he's a good guy and, mm -hmm. and he's a solid fighter. Definitely in the gatekeeper Hall of Fame. Yeah, definitely. He's from Chicago too, right? Adrian? I don't know where that dude's from. I think he's from chi -Town. I think he's from Chicago too. Can't keep a fool, bro. It is what it is. He's, he's going to be a deep dish. <laughs> <laughs> we in a deep dish. <laughs> deep dish taco. You know what I'm saying? Deep dish yeah, taco. Yeah, so he is from Chicago? That's what's up. Shot yeah. town. You know, shot town. Yeah, nah, but that's I all. I get a lot of love. I get a lot of love from people from Chicago. So salute to Chicago. I think that's it, man. That's it, man. That's it. Yeah. Woo -woo. You know what I mean? Mighty Mighty Boxing Bros, you already know what it is. We'd like to thank everybody for rocking with us, man. We definitely appreciate you guys. You know who I am. I'm Tro Dollar Bill, and Tro Talk is out everywhere. And then that's my brother, Caden, right there. You know my brother hitting all them facts. That's my man. They call him Slippery G, but we call him Conspiracy G. That's my man right there. You know that's the TBE, baby. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. We're the Boxer Bros. Please like and subscribe and check us out on Instagram and Twitter. And please check out our podcast on all major streaming services. We appreciate you guys more than you know.
of the set too. 